Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, tonight to <coughs> McGuanago High School for this playoff matchup between the number five seeded Arrowhead Warhawks and the number four seeded McGuanago Indians. So tonight, before the game, we're going to do something special tonight. We're going to honor former Arrowhead football coach Tom Taraska, who passed away last Sunday. Thank you, Lee. So today I'm going to start with the first message I got from Coach Matt Harris of Arrowhead Football. I asked around for people to share some info about him so that way we could fill ourselves up with information. Honor such, he was a really well-known legacy person to Wisconsin high school football. So, Matt Harris started out by saying, Tom Tarasco was an amazing human being. I truly believe he built a community through a high school football program. He mentored, coached, loved so many people in this community. He helped mold many people into outstanding community members, which many of our players' dads had him as a coach, including Kyle Jenke, Mac Bong, Jack Lesh, Kyler Farrell, Harper Hughes, and many more. He coached some of our coaches in Nick Hayden, Billy Hirschfield, Jimbo Lavoy, and Jeff Budzine. As of late, he mentored me. He has helped me navigate the ju juggernaut of what Arrowhead really is. He, he frequently texts and calls me to help things in perspective. Arrowhead football is Tom Taraska and always will be. I am just the guy steering the bus right now. But with his guidance, I know we will continue to create one of the best Heartland communities we can. Tonight for us, we just want to honor him that by playing the way he would expect. We will do our best to do that tonight. That came from the coach in a later earlier message today to me about Tom Taraska. So we're going to play one of the videos that was put out online as well real quick. I know it is. That was a nice message said there. During the week, they also turned their porch lights red in honor of Coach Taraska passing away. Coach Taraska was coached for UW Oshkosh football as well as Franklin High School during his times as a coach. Very successful coach. According to WIH 12, he led, let's see here, he's inducted a 2007 Coaches Hall of Fame for Wisconsin Coach of the Year in 2007. One sec. The retired, let's see here, let me find one more thing. I just had how many, he led them to nine state championship games, winning four times. So he started the rational of their football program. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for our tribute. We're going to head to the National Anthem now, and after that, we'll be back with number five versus number four. We'll be back in about five minutes. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike.
What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School for this nice playoff matchup between the number five seeded Arrowhead Warhawks and the number four seeded McGuanago Indians. Both teams six and three overall record this year. Both teams evenly matched coming in this way. Both teams play in the Classic A Conference. Going to be a thriller we're going to have out here tonight. One of the best games, once again, in the state that we are broadcasting tonight. Very much looking forward to it. Oh, there we go. All right. So, we're going to get ready to kick things off here going to be an exciting one that's for sure let me just get this out all right playback will be available on YouTube after the game once again as well yeah we got an exciting one for you guys tonight folks number five versus number four C tonight we got both teams in the classic eight conference representing division one here Winner of this game will advance to play either Ham Sussex Hamilton or what was the other team? Sun Prairie, some West, 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 West. Sun Prairie, West. Arrowhead. Winner and uh, Sussex Hamilton will play the winner of this game in the central region of Division One. Just a little over a minute left here before kickoff. Very big game tonight here. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Very much looking forward to it. First time we've seen Arrowhead in our broadcasting career. We saw McGuana go here a few weeks ago against Kettle Moraine. We saw Kettle Moraine versus Mosquito last week. Um, we, we had a few teams in there too, like this year. We saw Slinger versus Homestead. We saw Kakana versus Nina. We saw a lot of teams around the state this year, which is nice. So they also did a nice tribute here at the stadium to Coach Tom Taraska, kind of like what we did before the National Anthem. So we're going to get ready to kick things off here. Aren't you excited? The playoffs are finally yes, here. Yes, sir. Year two. Year two. Playoffs right underway. Yeah. For us. Yeah. Only year two. It feels like it's been longer. Yeah. And also, I'd like to thank everybody again for your support from last week. At one point of the game during Kettle Marine versus Muskego when we called that 821 live at one point of the game. That's just absolutely insane. Yeah. I'd like to thank everyone for your support. 1,800 that actually listened and clicked. Yes. So that was insane. Like live with us at the moment. Which yeah. Was crazy. That was awesome. So getting ready to kick things off here. Sooner, in the next few weeks, the game I get will be launching the playback option where you'll be able to play back after the game. No longer have to record it on YouTube for us, which is a good side of things. And that'll make it a better experience for the fans. You'll be able to view it on Max Preps anywhere. On YouTube as well, the game mic feature on YouTube. You can view it after each and every game. Hoping to launch that by state football or the basketball season. Oh, this is perfect. Look at the time right now, 6.59. We're about to get a 7 o'clock start right away. Yeah, sometimes Playoffs, we get, so get rock and rolling here. Muskego, the first playoff game today, beat Milwaukee Hamilton 55 to nothing. That one's already final today. And you got any update on that Germantown? Uh, Germantown game? pulled away, I think, 13 to six. Big upset that game today. Yeah. But here we go. This is the big slate of games tonight here. Yeah. Four versus five match. Here we go. McGuire kicking off the Arrowhead. Crowd getting loud already. And the kick is away. And it'll be taken about the 15 yard line out to the 20, out to the 25. Nixon Elliott. Taken down at the 26 yard line. So now Arrowhead's offense will come out led by quarterback Vance Holtz. First time we've seen him this year. He's a junior at Arrowhead High School. He's got a lot of offensive weapons around him. Kyle Janke at wide receiver. Colton Harriet at wide receiver. Nixon Elliott running back. Lots of weapons around him. He's going to be. One to go here early. But a good McGuanago defense as well. Good like big usual. player to watch on that secondary of McGuanago's Owen Kilt in the two wide receivers. Five. Two wide receivers on the right, two guys on the left, one guy in the backfield. Holt hands it off to the left side, taken down. Gonna be read pretty well by McGuanago. Down to about the 30. It's gonna be a gain of one or two maybe on the play. So it's gonna be second and nine, gain of one on the play. Second and eighth, actually, so gain of two in the last play. Vance Holtz will set up with a guy 
on his side. Two wide receivers on the right, one guy on the left. Second and eight from the 31 yard line. Just getting started here at McGuanago High School. Holtz gets a snap, hands it off once again. It's gonna go nowhere that time again. And oh, look at that, it's third down. How about that start on the D line for McGuanago getting early here. Guys, you got guys on the line like number 90, Walker Powers. Yeah, he's showing some power on that play right there. Getting the tackle for McGuanago. That defensive line, the first two plays. Airhead going a little run action there. They, they like to pass a lot too. So, third and six coming right now. Sorry, we just got on the Just a Game live stream. Holtz gets a snap. Looking over to the right side it is incomplete. So, McGuanago, Arrowhead's going to have to punt here. McGuanago, Arrowhead goes three and out. Looked like he tried to read his wide receiver that time, Harper Hughes. Looked like he just overthrew him a little bit there. A little miscommunication from the wide receiver and the quarterback there. He threw a little overthrow, underthrew it there, or he threw it too late, I should say, as it went. Yeah. Kilt, or, uh, Harper was going to his left for a slant route there, and then Holtz thought he was going to his right there. But now McGuanago uh, is going to get forced to three and out here, and they're going to yeah. get the ball early. Yeah, so fourth and six. Arrowhead's going to have to punt here with 10.45 left here in the first quarter. The punt is away, and it'll be taken at about the 30-yard line. Out to the 35, out to the 40, down to the 41-yard line, and McQuanna goes off. Oh, there is a play. There's a flag on the play. Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see what, who that's on real quick. So McGuanago's offense will come out under quarterback Tyler Schultz. Mason Radabicki, one of the running back taking over for when staying last year. He's done a pretty good job filling the role this year. We'll just say that, to be the least. And that's something we need to watch out for here today, too. The last few weeks, redbick has been dealing with an ankle injury, I believe it was. And this week, you know, we really got to look for number 22 on the field tonight. See if he's out there. That's Redebecki. Yep. Yeah. So looks right, like, looks like earlier they're bringing out number 11, George Taher, the running back, to start here. All right. Redebeck, he might be limited or he might not be playing tonight. We'll yeah, see. We're not 100% sure. We never got an injury report. They don't really give those in high school. Anyways, first to 10 for the 35 from McGuanago. One wide receiver on the right. No guys on the left. One guy in the backfield. Ref holding up play. Now putting the ball back in play. So first to 10 for the 35 from McGuanago. No score here early. Schultz gets a snap. Rolls to the right. Looking to the right. Pass to the right side. It is incomplete. Just a little bit out of the reach there. As it got a little bit to the right of the wide receiver. Another guy that I don't really see out there yet early from McGuano is offensive lineman Nathan Roy, committed to Minnesota, the, was ranked by 24-7 sports, number one in the state, right? Yeah, number one in the state for 24-7 sports in the 2024 class. Couple big inactives for the Warriors Indians tonight here. All right, second and 10 from 35. Oh. Shell hands it off to the right side in the backfield. There's a flag on the field, and everyone's going to read that pretty well as he goes down. I don't think he gained anything on the field. Holding. Holding on uh, McGuanago's offense. Now you can't do that chance. Spread out here and from Arrowhead student section. Boy, their student section really filled up. When we walked in, there was no one there. Now the McGuanago whole thing is pretty full. full as well here. Yeah. Obviously, both student sections have to pay for the playoffs. As uh, it, you know, you're the road to state now here. Yep. This is when it really matters. Whoever loses now, it's over for their team. One, one team's going to go home tonight. This is the fun part about this. You get One team gets to move on and... You get Brad and Reds, and one team has to go home. Both teams faced off earlier in the year. McGuanago won. I got. I'll look back later, but I think 20 points. I'm not sure. It was at Arrowhead, I believe. So second and 20 from the 25 from McGuanago. Gets a snap. Shaw handed off. Oh. He might do something good here. He might take it over the house. 40, 25, 30, 20. Down inside the 20-yard line. What a run there by McGuanago in the Arrowhead territory. And how about the run by the back of running back George Tyler, the senior. Unbelievable start for the War War Indians right there. And it shows shades of win statement. Right how about that? Big run for McGuanago, put him in the scoring territory. What a run there. What a run there. It's going to get him down to the 18 yard line. So first and 10, McGuanago from the 18 here. Um, Arrowhead's 18. Big run there. Indian. Time on McGuanago here, so they'll talk things over. So anyways, that run by them was very, just like, let's just say, 
a possession changer because Arrowhead was not playing bad defense before that. I mean, they had them almost stop there. They had a bad penalty. That, they had a penalty that went against them as well. That kind of screwed up their drive. But to get that run all the way deep in Arrowhead's territory. Put him in the red zone already. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the possession change right there. I mean, he took that, stuck that ball right up the middle. Kind of reminds me of what Iowa was doing in Wisconsin last week. They were running the ball constantly up the middle, and it's kind of what the that's the game, that's the play that won Iowa except the game. They were able to stop them most of that game, except yeah. for that one drive. Yeah. The problem was their offense couldn't score, but yeah, that's, that's Wisconsin. That's that's a failure. So, anyways, that's all Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. First to ten now from the 18. 9:58 left here in the first quarter. No score here. McGuanago has the ball on the Arrowhead 18. Shaw will set up with two wide receivers on the left, no guys on the right, one guy in the backfield next to him. Shaw on the way in the snap, Mo one guy in motions. Shaw gets the snap, Shaw Hit. crosses it to the left side, he catches it. Still on his feet, down to the 10, down to the 5, he is in the touchdown! That's where to go! 6 to nothing. We'll have to check in who that was. Number 13, Mason Kelly on the pitch that time. Really good play. Uh, early in this game, Tyler Schlott, they're reading a lot of those pitch. Like he's going to snap it, he's going to let them pitch the ball. I like those play call right there early from McGuanago there. That sets him up good, even with that run by number 11 that time earlier to set him up Gage Tyler. And they're, they're, they're blowing baby powder here early in McGuanago. Yep. The kick is away. And it is good. It's a seven nothing game for Arrowhead. Uh, McGuanago of seven nothing here early, and we will go to a game break for the first time today. Thirty. Back to Muskego High School, ladies and gentlemen, Elijah Banks alongside Matt Peck here for the Division One Level One playoffs here, round one, getting playoff start. 9.51 left here to go in the first quarter. McWanigo gets a big touchdown here on the drive set up by Gage Tar on a big 50-yard run and then a, put him in the red zone for an 18-yard jet toss touchdown from Tyler Schlett to Mason Kelly. 7-0 McWanigo oh. leads here, first three minutes. Arrowhead will start, receive the ball to 29, out to about the 30. Not a great kick by McGuanago there. It was kind of airborne there. So Arrowhead will come back on the field for the second time today in offense led by quarterback Vance Holtz. He is a 6'2 junior like I mentioned earlier. I couldn't so see that. Another numbers. year left of his career. He's got another year left to prove something here. Obviously this wasn't the best year for them, but they're looking to upset the McGuanago first this week here. Not a good start though, the first two minutes. Yeah, I mean, they play in one of the, they play in the toughest conference in the state. It's yeah. kind of hard. Somebody's always not going to be as good. Uh, Kettle Marine going 9-0. And, and the issue overall. the issue with McGuanago, too, is they lost their last two games, including a key one 27-9 loss last week against Waukesha West. All right, anyways, Holt starts off here with a run uh, to the right side, handing it off. That's going to go maybe one or two yards on the play. That was number 20, Jacob Seiner. On the run there for Arrowhead. Arrowhead looking like they're going a lot of run here early. Expect to see a lot of mixed run. They're a really good run pass team here. They like to run the ball with him, with Sinner and uh, Vance Holtz can throw the ball really good too. Anyway, second and eight from the 34-yard line. Two wide receiver to the left, two guys to the right. Holtz hands it off again, up the middle, oh. and the ball is out. Wait a minute, who's got it? And the Flutterco has it. And they're going to have an Arrowhead territory, too. Austin Shulist on the fumble recovery right there. Yeah, I saw that clear in my eyes right there. Uh, they're clearly frustrated here at Arrowhead. Nothing going right for them here. And we're only three minutes in this game. Yeah. So McGuanago will have the ball on Arrowhead's 38 now after the fumble. Wow. McGuanago. How about that? After that quick touchdown, 
Now you get the ball right back on the first play, the second play of the drive. How about that? This is a picture perfect start for the McGuanago Indians right now, Matt Peck. Yeah, starting out pretty good early, kept trying to defeat what they did last week. One wide receiver on the right from McGuanago, one guy in the backfield, no guys on the left. Shell hands it off up the middle. Oh. No, he keeps it himself. And there's a oh. fight, little bit of a scrumble on the field there. Play number 45 right there from McGuanago. Let me try to find his name. Ben Caesar was on top of a McGuanago or an Arrowhead player for a sec there. All right, so here we go. Second and eight from the 36. Start, start, things starting to get chippy here early between yeah. McGuanago and Arrowhead. Classic eight, though. Best conference in the state. Two teams that know each other well. Play each other in the regular season. Second and eight now. One wide receiver on each side. One guy in the backfield from McGuanago. Schultz awaiting the snap, gets a snap, hands it off up the middle. Touching throw for the first down, down to the 25 yard line. First down, up one to go. And that is once again. Gage Potter. Yep. What number is he? Number 11. Number 11, okay, now I know where to. Yep. Number 11, Gage Potter on the run there. Another senior right there. It'll be interesting to see if we get Radovicki in this game. Not not sure if he's been ruled out or not. Yeah, Radovicki's only a junior, two years, a leading rusher. So, I mean, Gage Taher, he's the senior here. Yep. He's, he's there running back one for now. First and 10 for the 25. One wide receiver on each side. One guy in the backfield from McGuanago. Schultz uh, under center waiting to snap. One guy in motion to the right next to Schultz. Schultz hands it off once again up the middle. Being read that time pretty well by Arrowhead. As he goes pretty much maybe one yard on the play. Also seems pretty fine without the, one of their number the number one lineman in the state, Nathan Roy, without him. McGuanago, they've been running the ball pretty well. With uh Gage Taher at running back here, the second string. Ma Mason Redabicki, obviously he's, he might not play the night here, as we can not know the injury report, but yeah. very good start for McGuanago. Anyway, second and five now from Arrowheads, 20 from McGuanago. 7.27 left here in the first quarter. McGuanago leads 7-0 here early, looking to go up 14. Two wide receiver on the right, one guy in the backfield. So, once again, waits a snap, rolls right. He's going to pass this time, pass to the right side. Yeah, caught. Oh, 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 oh. Kelly nearly, nearly dropped that time. That ball was bobbled there at first, but he was able to haul it in for McGuanago first down. Hey, how about this? They got a lot of juniors on this team running this offense right now. You got Mason Kelly, star wide receiver on this team. When McGuanago has passed the ball a lot here, and they also got obviously Mason Redebecki's out tonight. But well, we don't know. But this is really good start here for this McGuanago offense as well. Looking to score here on that second drive already. First and ten from the 12-yard line for McGuanago. One wide receiver on each side, one guy in the backfield. Shaw gets a snap, tosses it left side. This could be dangerous. No, never mind. He's going to take it now to the eight yard line. Arrowhead read that play pretty well as they all shifted to the left once they saw the run coming. I mean, that's the third time we've seen that already today. McGuanago has been pretty successful running that. This time, Arrowhead and their defense coordinator ran that play really well. They're expecting it as everyone shifted over to the left to bring a quick tackle right there. So now, second and six from the eight-yard line for McGuanago. Up 7 nothing here early with six minutes left here in the first quarter. Schultz gets the snap, rolling the right. He's going to run up the middle himself, and he's going to be way short of the touchdown. Down to about the five-yard line, and now it's going to be third down and goal for McGuanago. Arrowhead, the best option is to hold him to a field goal. Going down two scores in a playoff game, it's huge. So they can hold him to a field goal. This is far from over still. It's, it's not over 14 nothing, obviously. I think McGuanago's done the best so far, too, is just keeping that run game steady here, just like when they had wins thing. Yep. That's what caused them to go to state last year. Yep, so third down and goal from the third and three. I think they. St I don't know if they still can get a first down. No, I think they can, yeah. So third and three, actually. Five yards to go until a touchdown. Running up the middle. And is he in? No, no, he's going to be stopped short easily. They're giving an extra push here, but I, he might get a first down. Yeah, I think he got a first down, but not enough for the touchdown. I think he stopped about the two-yard line. Yep. No, he's going to be stopped a little short. Yeah, it, lo it didn't look like at first on the first attempt he was going to get enough. Or it will be a first down. Yeah, maybe my bad. Maybe a first bad. down, McGuanago, so first and goal from the two. Now, if you're right here, you got to bring some pressure up front here. They're going to run it up the middle pie with Gage Taher. 
Oh, they're about to go to the pitch again with Mason Kelly, so you got to be able to roll to your left here as they got no guys on the right. All right. Fourth. Second. Waiting to snap here. The McGuire going yeah, right out the middle. You know, and Ooh. he's just short, I think. Yep, that was the one-yard line. He kind of got tripped up there. Good effort right there. And what I tell you, Connor Foley on the tackle right there that time. Wait. Oh, they... So now it's a first down. Wait. Now it's a first down, yeah. Yeah, because I noticed it was like third down and some on the scoreboard. I was like, I was confused. So it wasn't the first. They just converted the first down now, if you're listening. But what I tell you, they were. you got to expect to play like a toss like that on two yards away from yeah. the end zone. you got to expect the toss, and they were so able the to one, right away. The ones come up on the scoreboard, 1-1-1. One, one, one. First quarter, one ball, one yard to go, first and one. Watch the motion. Here's the motion. Running up the middle. He is pushing through. He's going to stop the goal line. Nice stop there by Arrowhead. Reading it right on the one yard line. Number 90, Mason Waterfield on the tag right there, just getting his big body on that one there. He stopped him one yard. He, they stayed right where he was, one yard away. So second and goal from the one now. Arrowhead needs to stop him two more times. She's all the way in the snap. This time he'll set up with one wide receiver on each side, one guy in the backfield. Way in the snap here. Bleacher's palm. She's all the way in the snap. Gets the snap. Hands up at the middle. Here it is. Goes up 13 to nothing. Here early. They are allowed here tonight. I don't see a single seat open here tonight. Between Arrowhead and Maguana go, so perfect, 13. Perfect conditions for weather tonight. Obviously, it's not like last week where we had that bad rainstorm with the wind. It's not too cold outside, but it's definitely hoodie weather for fall. Picture That's perfect start once again for Maguana go. <laughs> so the kick is away, and it is good. The 14 and nothing lead for Maguana go here in the first quarter with 3:51 left here, and we will head to a game break real quick. Stay on, stay on. We swear to stay on because we got some scores for you guys from the state. Kim Kimberly leads Alpton North 3 0 in the first quarter. West Pier leads Menominee Falls 13 0 in the first quarter. Bateport leads Riverside at 7 0, and I'm working on some other scores right now. We'll get back to you. That is Milwaukee Riverside, as I think yeah, there's Milwaukee another Riverside, Riverside yeah. in the state. Yep, that's all I got right <laughs> now, though, as I continue to search for some scores. All around. So, st update from Greendale, still 0-0 there between them and Stoughton. Um, there'll be no updates coming from the Franklin Sabres game unless you want to watch Franklin Sabres, head to YouTube as there's no one allowed in the stadium tonight in Franklin. Let's see. Uh, maybe head over to their stream and see if I can get a score. Oh, I got another one real quick. Nina leads over DC Everest 6-0 early in the first quarter. And... Looking all the way around. Kakana leads Brookfield Central 7-0 in the first quarter. And Franklin leads Bradford 7-0 here early. And the kick is away here. Coming back to Mosquito Air. Cutting on the right side. Taken down about the 21-22 yard line. And Arrowhead's offense will come back on once again led by Vance Holtz. All right, so 24-yard line Arrowhead will start off at. 3.44 left here in the first quarter. 14-0 lead for McGuanago. Arrowhead fumbled on the last possession. So Vance Holtz will start off with two wide receivers on the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield. If you're Arrowhead right here, you gotta, you got to really score on this drive right here. Yep. You're already down 14-0. Holtz gets a snap, passes to the right side, is caught. Gain about four or five on the play. Nice pass there off to the right side by Holtz. Kilton on the tackle from McGuanago. Kilton on the tackle from McGuanago that time. So second and six now. That's a gain of four on that pass by Arrowhead. Now that's out to the 28-yard line. So they will set up now with one wide receiver on the left, one guy on the right. Holtz telling his wide receiver something on the left side before we get motion here. So he'll set up with one guy next to him in the backfield from the 28-yard line. Second and six. Holtz looking to the right side. Oh, Half downfield is incomplete. Way throw over, way underthrown. Oh wow. Anyways, third and six from the 28 yard line. 334. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
All right, let's go. <laughs> Third and six from the 28 yard line. And here we go. <laughs> if you're in right here, you cannot go three and out right here. Vance Holtz, you got, you got some pretty, his looks haven't been too great so far here early. All right, here's the snap. Looking downfield. Oh, 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 he fucked down. He might have gone. He might have gone. For the mile, if he'd have stayed up, that was complete to about the 43 yard line. He would that? fell down. He probably would have ran into McGonagall territory easily. Big play by sophomore wide receiver Ryan Hyman on the catch right there. He, he just played his defender really well right there. It looked like that could have been picked too. Yeah. But, but he, if he didn't fall right there, he could have taken it to the house right there. That would have been huge for Arrowhead. At least they don't go three and out on this drive. That's a good start. First attempt for the 42. Holtz hands it off up the middle. And that's going to be a game about two or three on the play. Going back to that last play, that was complete to about the 45, 42 yard line. That was about 14 yard pass there by Holtz. That's exactly what Arrow had needed there on third down. So it'll be second and seven over in the 45, 253 left here in the first quarter. McGuanago leads 14 nothing over the five seated Arrowhead. Holtz gets a snap, looking to the left side, looking, going downfield, and it is incomplete off the hand. Almost caught there. He was really going, he was really going for the deep run right there after he was feeling himself with that last play. But just really good coverage by number one that time. That was Jack, um, Bryce Belter on the recep, the, recep, um, the coverage right there. All right. Very good. Third and seven now for the 45 yard line. 242 left here in the first quarter. Holtz gets a snap, looking the right side. Looking downfield, he's got an incomplete fight. Oh. This is going to be a pass interference on McGuanago. That's going to give Arrowhead a first down. Pass interference was committed about the 35-yard line. Austin Shula is right when that, right when the guy was running the route. He saw he saw the man wide open for Arrowhead right there, and he he just pulled them down right there. You just cannot do that for if you're McGuanago right there on a third down, especially. Yeah. Now, now everyone's going to get the ball for the first time in enemy territory here. Pretty good drive so far for the Warhawks trying to get right back in this game. Yep. So with 2.33, 8 left, Arrowhead in McGuanagos territory for the first time today. Two wide receivers on the right, two guys on the left, one guy in the backfield. Waiting to snap. Holtz gets the snap. Going to roll to the left side, going to keep himself back to the middle. Now cutting to the right side, down, straight through tackles. Take it down two or three yards, four yards out. But he did some pretty good moves there, I'll admit. He had an open hole there. He's a It almost looked like he couldn't get anything on that one there, but he got now they're moving the chains a little bit. He got three or four yards on the play right there. He could have got stopped a yard a yard behind and he 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 takes five yards out of that. Very good effort by quarterback Vance Holston and he's only a junior too. How about that? Yep, so second and six now for the thirty six yard line. Fourteen nothing lead for McGuanago. Arrowhead in McGuanago's territory now. Second and seven, 37, gets the snap, Holtz looking to the left side, pass to the left side, that's going to be oh. almost intercepted. Dangerous pass there by Vance Holtz. Wow. You're going to have to hedge yourself up after that one. Looked like wide receiver Sam Schneider that time wasn't ready as he was running his slot route. He just was not looking, and that could have been picked, if, but the, he's lucky the McGuanago defender wasn't looking either, so that could have been picked either way, and no one was there, that could have been a pick six. Oh yeah, that was usually a pick six, and that Third and seven from the 37 yard line. 154 left here in the first quarter. McGonagall leads 14 nothing. Two wide receivers on the left, two guys on the right. Holtz gets a snap, looking to the left side, looking downfield. He's gonna take it downfield. He might got him in. It is. Oh, incomplete. He dropped it. Oh, oh no. man. That was right in his hands. He was wide open. Ryan Hyman, you cannot drop that ball. Just a beautiful place ball by Vance Holtz right there in the end zone. Beat his defender number one that time. Wow. Oh my goodness. He get, you got to catch that. You're in the playoffs, man. You got to catch that. That's just unbelievable. So everyone's going to go for a fourth and seven with a 37 yard. Three wide receiver on the left, one guy on the right. Holtz gets a snap. Any pressure. Holtz going to take it out the middle. Cut it through the middle. He's got a first down easily. Down to the 25, down to the 25 yard line. First down, Arrowhead. Love this aggressiveness by quarterback Vance Holtz earlier. He's showing, showing a lot of strides here. That's why a lot of colleges are looking at him already. Look at this, man. He, that picture-perfect throw, he makes up for it on fourth down here, getting a really big run here, setting him just outside the red zone here. That could have been a, a game-shifting drive right there for Arrowhead. They could have got that play right there, though. First and 10 for the 23-yard line. Two wide receiver on the right, one guy on the left. Holtz gets a snap, hands it off to the left side. 
Cutting to the left side back. Cutting into the throw towards the end zone. He is down at about the two or one yard line, but that's close, man. Arrowhead starting to move the ball now pretty well here. Now this air offense after that play starting to wake up here. Big run by Jack Sinner right there. Setting him up in the in the, the goal goal territory here. To first and goal at the three now. Now Vance Holtz checking in with the coach right now. See what they got here. Now I, th I think they, they, this drive is looking very promising here. You should punch punch it in right before the end of this quarter. Yep. First and goal for the three now for Arrowhead. Down 14 nothing. Here with one. 12 left here in the first quarter. Holtz gets a snap, hand it off, up the middle. Wait a minute. Short. Yeah, oh, short. Big push right there. McGuana goes D-line once again. Started off really good here, and now they, they got to force a big stop here on the goal line here as the time ticks under one. Yeah, looks like uh, Sinner only got about a gain of one on the play right there. Yeah, so second and goal from the two-yard line now. Here we go, second and goal from the two. Arrowhead down 14, now need the score here. Holtz away in the step. Oh, oh he's got to keep that zero. And taken down short. Oh, that my goodness. Snap there. Man. You cannot afford that to happen while you're in your own goal line right here. That is, That could be a game deciding factor right there. Well, hey, wait. Look like at the ref. Yeah. The ref was signaling something, but I guess there was nothing now. Yeah, I thought it was a touchdown for something. Oh, wait a minute. Right. Third and goal for the two. For... For Arrowhead, Holtz away in the snap. Get the snap, takes it himself. Holtz is in with the touchdown. Van Holtz get the Arrowhead on the board. And like I said, I'll say it again. Van Holtz using his legs very well so far here early and big plays of the drive. That fourth and seven, that first big play to keep their drive alive. And now that big push on the touchdown right there. It's a one position game again, Matt Peck. Yep. So 14 to six now. Arrowhead's going to attempt the extra point now. What a run there. That's exactly what Arrowhead needed though. So now they just need to come on, stop them on defense, then you gotta really you gotta really attempt the extra point. The kick is away and it is good. Arrowhead gets seven on the board. It's 14 to seven here. And we will take you to a quick game break for the first time. For real this time. <laughs> Welcome back to La welcome back to McGuanago High School, ladies and gentlemen. 14-7 game here between Arrowhead and McGuanago. McGuanago leads. They're getting the ball back after an Arrowhead touchdown rush. Qu QB sneak by quarterback Vance Holtz. So with eight seconds left. They'll head the ball back. If there's something wrong with McGuanago scoreboard, seven to four the scoreboard says, and they will take it out down to the 20, down to the 25, cutting back in to the 30, 31, 32 yard line. The clock will run down to a second left in the quarter. And McGuanago will take the field. So the score is in reality seven to four. Look at the scoreboard. It's fourteen to seven. But same thing. <laughs> One point two seconds left here. That, that might confuse me later in the game. All right. <laughs> All right. One second left here in the quarter. McGuanago leads fourteen to seven. Tyler Shaw will take the field with one wide receiver on the right, one guy in the backfield, no guys on the left. First and 10 for the 32. Shaw gets the snap, hand rolling to the right side, passing the right side. That's going to be incomplete. Oh, they throw it a flag. Oh my lord, I don't know about that. That was a little, that was tough. I don't know if you could throw a flag there. Wow. Pretty picture perfect coverage from Jackson yeah. Schultz right there. But that'll be the end of the first quarter, anyways. Uh, we might as well take a game break right now before we get started. Yep.
Is it on? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School. 14-7 lead for McGuanago at the beginning of the second quarter here. Big pass interference call on Arrowhead at the end of the quarter. Show will toss it to the right side. Running backwards, though. This could be a good chance for Arrowhead. Nice play there by Arrowhead to get him in the backfield. Brady Carpenter read that one right away here. Arrowhead really running that jet toss play by McGuanago now. Now, now McGuanago is starting to lose play, uh they're starting to lose uh, yards on these plays where they toss it. Never mind. That was a funnel. Wow. Jeez. You no, know, they, they they had the 12 o'clock on there. So anyway, that, that's end of the first quarter yeah. now. So guess no. I guess we'll look on your scoreboard thing on Score Stream. All Scores right, provided by Scoreboard, Max Preps, all those things. Score right. Stream. I mean. Ready? Go ahead. West Pier leads Monomany Falls 13 to zero in that. Did you refresh quarter. that? Yep. Okay. Bayport leads Riverside and Milwaukee, yeah, 23 to zero in the first quarter. Kakana leads 14 to seven on Brookfield Central, and Brookfield Central gets on the board here in the first quarter. Um, Nashua leads Plymouth 13 zero in the first quarter. For now, Kimberly only leads Apple to North 3 zero in the second quarter. So that's a really big game. We're going to be keeping a look at. Nina leads DC Everest 14 zero in the first quarter here. That's all we got for now. Back to you, right. back. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Here. Second and ten second and eighteen from the thirty-nine for McGuanago. Shall away the snap, two wide receiver left, one guy motions now as as he hands it off up the middle. Taken. It was pretty well read there by Arrowhead. And okay. you've already seen that a couple times a day where Gage Taher gets a big push for a first down, or almost first down a lot. And other than that big run earlier in the first quarter to set them up for their first score of the game. But the run game has been the priority once again for McGuanago, just like it always has been. All right, third and 18 from the 44. McGuanago needs a big play to huh, get themselves back in this drive. So Arrowhead just needs to get one more big stop here. I was looking like third and 13 right now. Third and 13, okay. From McGuanago. One wide receiver set up on each side. One guy in the backfield. One guy motions once again from McGuanago. Schultz gets the snap. Hands it off up the middle. Pushing up the middle. It's going to be right pretty well. It's going to be fourth down. And Arrowhead's going to get the football back here down seven. And the big play set it up at the end of the first quarter where Arrowhead read that jet toss right there to the right. And everyone shifts the way it goes. That's just how it goes. It, that's a big gamble for McGuanago there when you'd run those plays when Arrowhead's starting to run or know what they're doing on that now. Fourth and ten. Oh. And it'll be punted away. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good punt. Taking it about the twelve yard line. Out to the fifteen. Out to the twenty. Down to about the thirty yard line. Twenty five yard line actually. And Arrowhead's offense once again under Vance Holtz will come out again. Scrolling around on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. Franklin High School playing with an empty stadium tonight. Fortunately. Um, you can look up on the news if you want to know what happened. I'm not going to talk about that on here, but they're playing with empty stadium. West Bend East up on New Berlin West, six to nothing. That's an upset. Kimberly, yep. All right, that's all we got. All right, here we go. First and ten for the 25-yard line. 10:32 left here. Holtz gets a snap, hands it off to the to the right side. That's going to be pretty well read there. Gain about two or three in the play. Dave Keller on the tackle there from McGuanago. Arrowhead, man, if they can get in with a score here, man. I mean, totally different game if that could happen. Second and seven now for the 28 yard line. Holtz gets the snap, looking to the left side. That's going to be caught on the left side, down the sideline, out at the 41 42 yard line. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> now it's me. You're good. There, You're good. We, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. They're probably losing. <laughs> 14 to 7. I'm talking about um that school in Illinois, yeah, right? Definitely school in <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> Ten of that, minutes left. Quick leads Indian Charles 7 nothing in the second quarter. Southeast Conference matchup there. They will play Franklin next week, most likely. Well, they're warning the band here with the playage of all teams are in the huddle. So you see that a lot. 
First and 10 from the 37 yard line for Arrowhead after a big first down there. 10 on two left here in the second quarter. McGuanagan leads 14 to seven. Arrowhead has the ball. Holtz gets the snap, hands it off to the right side, cutting around the right side. Still on his feet, take it down. It's gonna be a little bit of a loss there. Just kept rolling and rolling his right. And that was Jacob Siner on the run that time. Just get enough that time. As he kept rolling his right, nothing, nothing was able to get open right there. And now, second down and 11. So, still got two plays to do something for Arrowhead. For the 36 yard line. Two of receivers on the left. Timeout. Ref calls timeout. They're blowing the plate. Oh, the band. That's another warning to the band. If they do that again, it's probably going to be a penalty on the band. And we'll want to go if that happens again. So they're going to have to get that straightened out over there. It's you like never, and a coach would hate to have a penalty call against your own. It's like in like McGonagall's band trying to play a little bit of mind games here on the offense, trying to get inside Vance Holtz on the offensive side here so they can't hear. Two hours here on the left, two guys on the right. Holtz gets a snap. Hands it off to the left side, up the middle. Take it down at about the 48 yard line. <laughs> and, what? All right, I'm not, what? I think you just said 48 yard line. <laughs> 43 yard line, 43. 35 for the 43 yard line, 34 now. Irvin needs a first down here. Everyone is loud here. That was a pretty big run last play by Insider though. Yeah. Gotta go fast right here though. We got three guys that watch motion, man. Here we go. Third and four. Yep. Quick pass to the right side. Yeah. I think caught, but it's short. He might he might have just got enough though. We might we, we might have to bring the chains out possibly. They're gonna have to bring the chains out, I think. Maybe, I, or he might be short, yeah. I'm not sure. I could short. Oh. Ooh. Just a yard short. Talk oh, about man. a heck of an effort though by number one that time on McGuanagos defense. Bryce Belter, the senior, he, he just came out of nowhere. He read that one right away. It was a quick pass. Screen pass, I should say. And he came right there, took him down by the legs. He fell down right away there to make sure he didn't get it there. It looks All like right. Arrowhead's going to go for it. Yeah, though. They have to here. That's big. One wide receiver on each side. He be oh, gets a step. Oh, oh, he got, got, it. It. got it for the first down. Van Holtz once again. QB sneaking it. It's like you see that a lot here. You don't got the brotherly shove like the NFL in high school, but they do got the snap and they just run. It's like Wildcat where you get the snap and you run it up the middle right away. Got to expect it if you're going to go too with the defensive lineman. So they get in. They're one yard away from McGuanagos territory for the second time today. 7.55 left here, Holtz sets up with one wide receiver on each side, one guy in the backfield. Holtz away in the snap, gets the snap, looking to hand off, pass to the middle, that's gonna be caught! Down to the 35 yard line, and a first down for Arrowhead. And Ryan Hyman to get a little bit of redemption right there with that big catch right there after dropping the big touchdown catch that he dropped in early in the first quarter. Really big route right there, just a quick slant right there, beat his man, get a quick first down right there, put him in the enemy territory, good job for Arrowhead so far. So, first to 10 now for the 35 yard line. Two wide receiver on, on the right, one guy on the left. Holtz gets a snap, hands off to the right side. Cutting through the middle once again, up the middle, and take it down for about game three or four on the play. That's some pretty good juke moves there by the running back, I gotta admit there. Kids got some moves. Colin Trang on the tackle from McGuanagall that time. The Bleachers pound. McGuanagall wants to stop here, second and seven. Two wide receiver on the left. Two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield next to Holtz. Holtz looking to the right side, looking downfield, going downfield, and it is going to be oh, a play. There's going to be a fight. Yeah. Pass interference on McGuana go there. Yes. Number three that time, Austin Shulist kind of grabbed him by the helmet right there. It yeah, like he, he pulled him down. He threw him down by the helmet. There wasn't a penalty called there. This, this time <laughs> I don't know it would have been a penalty. Wow. He kind of threw him down there kind of hard, though. Grabbed him right away. Not the, not the greatest pass by Holes, but Shulis was able to just, he just got a hand on him on the horse collar right there, it looked like. All right, first to 10 for the 17. All right, guys, 14-7 lead for McGuanagall. Can't forget either, it's only a 15 yard penalty, two hours, right? Yeah, two hours here on the right, one guy on the left. Holes gets the snap, running up the middle, cutting to the left side. 
Taking down about the 11. Quick so score. it's down to the 12-yard line. Quick score up there here. Kimberly gets a touchdown now. And now they're up 10 to, 10 to 0 in the second quarter still, midway through. Second and five from the 12-yard line for Arrowhead. Two wide receivers on the right, one guy on the left. Nobody in the backfield on the side of Holtz. Waiting to snap here. Gets the snap. Rolling back the pass. Looking to the end zone. Looking. No plenty of time. Holtz. He got plenty of time. to the right now. Oh. He might take it himself. Down to the end zone. Way out of bounds there. He very, had absolutely no pressure on him. Very either. good protection by the O-line that yeah. time there. He had plenty of time to throw it, but very good. Even better coverage by McWanago secondary right there. And now Vance Holtz, he just couldn't find anybody, so he just threw it in the back of the end zone right there. Maybe he was trying to find a guy there, but he just overthrew him. He could have even ran it up himself there. He had a lot of room right as he was rolling to his right. Third and five from the 12-yard line. Two wide receivers on the right, one guy in the left, one guy in the backfield. Holtz gets the snap, looking to the right. Pass from the middle, that is incomplete. Another flag thrown, pass appearance. Wow. We're going to go. They are just ruining the drive. This time it's Owen Kilton. Yep. And now that now that's going to set up Arrowhead in the first and goal again. <laughs> Two big plays that set up crucial uh, a crucial drive here for Arrowhead. And they both happen to be pass interference plays. Look like Owen Kilton got a little push on the wide receiver that time there. Just can't do that when you're in the red zone, unfortunately, if you're McWanago. First and goal from the six-yard line. 6-11 left here in the second quarter. Arrowhead looking to score. Two wide, two wide receivers on the right. One guy on the left for Arrowhead. One guy beside Holtz in the backfield. Holtz gets a snap. Roll to the right. Looking to the end zone. Pass is incomplete. Overthrown. Pretty good coverage there by McGuanagall that time. Very good pressure coming out of nowhere. The defensive lineman Ryan Newman. Or Wyatt Newman, excuse me, on the play there. Just coming right at the quarterback there. He was unblocked right there. And got right to him and forced Vance Holtz to throw it out of bounds there. Second down and goal now. All right. Second down and goal from the six-yard line. 6.06 left here in the second quarter. <laughs> one, wire, one wide receiver on each side. One guy waiting to snap. Vance Holtz gets a snap. Right handing off at the middle. Cutting through the middle. Take oh. it down. Lots of yards there. That was... Jeez, I'm on the wrong team here. Jacob, si Jacob Siner on the run there. And like again, Walker Powers, he's been a busy man on that D-line for McGuanago there. He, he, they lost two yards on the play on that run. Now it's a big third down today here. Expect this McGuanago baseball to get loud here. Third and, eight, third and goal from the eight yard line. Two wide receivers on the right. One guy on the left. Holtz gets a snap. Coming in the back though. Looking to the end zone. That's going to be incomplete. Right off the No head. flag this time. No flag. So Arrowhead is going to have to go with the field goal team. All right, four. So now Arrowhead is going to kick the field goal. Yeah. But, they able to, yarder. but they're getting some momentum back, Arrowhead, here. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, because they're getting down the field once again. I mean, Burke Phillips once again here on the field goal attempt, 25-yard attempt. All right, here we go for Airhead. 5:27 left here. The kick is up, and I don't. Uh, and it's gonna be good. It's gonna be at seven. Gonna be at 14 to 10 game here, and we will take a game break.
I'm going to McGuanago High School here. Five or four seed matchup here. Arrowhead trails McGuanago the four seed. 14 to 10. 527 left here to go in this first round playoff matchup here in the WIAA. Big score update here in Division Two. The number one seed Kakana playing the number 18 Brookfield Central are tied at 14 right now in the second quarter. We're going to keep you updated here, but Matt Peck kick off right back in this game. All right, so McGuanago will take it from the 15 out to the 20. Out to the 25, down to about the 26, 27 yard line. So McGuanago's offense will come back on the field up by four now. Only Arrowhead able to get 10 straight points. And Arrowhead's starting to move better now on offense. They got put something put together, although McGuanago had a few penalties committed there. So first and 10 now from the 28 yard line. I'm gonna shut this up a little more. So you only hear as much of their noise. Not to hear the cowbells too much. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten from the twenty-eight yard line. At least it's not raining that either, where I can't see anything. Yeah, that's, that's why we outside. had open last. <laughs> First and ten, one wide receiver left. Schultz hands it off up the middle. Going to be read pretty well there by Arrowhead's defense. So it's going to be second and ten now from the tw about the twenty. Second and nine from the twenty-nine now for Arrowhead. Let's see, they're just, I'll admit though, everyone's doing a good job. They're coming back in they this one. They're pulling the momentum back right yeah. after they went down 14 nothing early. Vance Holt's got a big drive there, running the ball for touchdown. Drove down the field, a couple of big pass interference calls, got a field goal. Now you got to get a big stop right here if you're ahead. One wide receiver set up on each side, one guy in the backfield. So, rolling back to pass, going, going down downfield, oh. and it's going to be intercepted. Oh. Is he, he out of bounds? He's out of bounds. Oh, wow. That was close. I mean, I thought he got a foot in at first. I don't like that, that I don't throw know. right there from yeah. Tyler Schlutt, though. That's a wake-up call of Tyler Schlutt there. He can't, you can't throw it deep there when you got two Arrowhead guys in the secondary right on that one McGuanago guy right there on the reception there. Yeah, you're going to get beat every time on that play unless your wide receiver is that fast. <laughs> like a Tyree Kill type speed. All right. Third and nine now for McGuanago from their own 29. They will set up with two wide receivers on the right. Two guys on the left. I'm waiting to snap here. So there's no one in the backfield. Now motions a guy. Hands it off in the backfield. That's going to be right pretty well by Arrowhead there. And it's going to set a fourth down. Tyler Arrowhead. Yeah. Linebacker Tyler Carnell right there. Read that one. He, he was following the motion man right away and tackled him for a loss. And now Arrowhead really got the momentum right now. You can take a lead on this next drive. Yes, you can. And yeah. yeah, plenty of time too. Four, four fifteen. You're looking at four minutes left here to get something before the half. So yeah, fourteen ten. McGuanago's gonna punt it away. I have not. I'm waiting for an update from. I haven't got an update yet from Sussex. Oh, and anyways, taking it back out. Down to the fifty. Oh, oh. The fifty. Down to the forty-five. Oh. He's pushing, and he's gonna be in Arrow McGuanago's territory already. What a start for Arrowhead in their possession here. Okay, but back, going back to what I was going to say, the winner of this game plays the winner of Sun Prairie West and Sussex Hamilton. I haven't gotten a score yet in that game, but Tyler, Tyler Hatcher scored a touchdown, so I believe they're up seven to nothing. I've not gotten any other up, other updates. So Sussex Hamilton, I believe, is up seven nothing. But reminder again, winner of this game goes to Sussex next week. Talk about an effort by Connor Foley, the kick returner there for Arrowhead. Now they set up on McGuanago's 40 to start this drive, and you got plenty of time. Like I said again, 354. He just kept going after he got pressured on their own 40 and got about almost 20 yards extra on there. Momentum shifted really towards Arrowhead now. Two wide receivers on the right and left. One guy in the backfield. First to 10 for the 40 for Arrowhead. Holt's looking to pass to the right side. That is going to be complete down to the 35-yard line. Nice Sam quick Schneider. pass there. Short passing. I like it. So second and five now from the 35-yard line. 339 left here in the first, second quarter. 14-10, McGuanago lead. Arrowhead scored 10 straight points. So, coach is coming out. There's an injured player on the field real quick. So, I guess give us, uh, you got the score stream up? Because going to game break is no fun for our fans. I'll, so. I'll reload it real quick here. So, at the half, Kimberly leads Appleton North 10-0 at the half. Bayport leads 29 to 0 over Milwaukee Riverside in the second quarter. West Pierce still leads Menominee Falls 13 0. Plymouth trails Menasha 21 0 in the second quarter. That's an upset, I think. Yeah. 
Nina and DC Evers going in a shootout right now. 21-14. Nina leads in the second quarter. Cedarburg leads over Hortonville, 13-0. Another addition about the Hortonville game. You can watch that game on Wisp Sports Live on YouTube. That's the Thursday Night Throwdown program that they put together. They're doing playoff games as well. So that hortonville Cedarburg game's on Wisp Sports as well. Olmstead leads Pulaski 15-7 in the second quarter. Kakana and Brookfield Central, the game we're going to be keeping an eye on a lot tonight. 14 to 14 right That's now. That's on Zaleski Sports. You can watch that one live for free. Kakana versus um, Brookfield Central. Oh, the pier uh, leads upset. Milwaukee Marshall 21 to 8 in the second quarter. 8 over, eight seed leaves over the one seed right now. That was to be expected. The way yep. the seeding is kind of messed in the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, there's been a lot of conversation going on. You can join the conversation online with the, the seeding of the um, city schools, getting uh, one and two seeds. It's been the conversation the latest, but both of these teams evenly matched here early, 14-10, but Arrowhead's moving the ball to take the lead here. And they got plenty of time before half, 338 in the second quarter left here. Second and five from their own, from McGuanagos, 35. Two wide receiver on the left, two guys on the right. Holtz gets the snap. Hands it off, up the middle, cutting up the middle, cutting off to the left side now, to the 20, to the 15, 10, Izzy just goes out of bounds at the five yard line, what a run there by, that's going to be by Jacob Siner, I believe there's a flag on the field, I'm not 100% sure, I think it was an after the play hit right there, late hit as he was running out of bounds, you can't hit him when, you, when you're sending him out of bounds right there, yeah, so a late hit on the play, Oh, man. All right. So let's see. Hear what the flag is. I believe it was what you said. And they're moving Arrowhead back. Never mind. Wow. Wow. But that was a pretty good run. That that gives them the confidence in the run game that they can do it. I mean, look, they got still some holes on McGuanago that they can cut through. They've done well when they scored the touchdowns on the last few drive, last drive, and then the field goal deep in the territory there. But they can. this shows they can do it. And... So now they will set up with first and 10 from the 18 now, as there was a penalty called back there. Two wide receivers on the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield next to Holtz. Still put in the red zone, though, obviously. Yeah. Holtz hands it off up the middle, taking it red well there by McGuanago that time. That was, once again, oh, man, I'm looking around the team again. Jacob, Jacob Seiner, the running back, cutting up the middle with that one. Oops, I hit the wrong button on my computer. <laughs> Huh. New Berlin West and I just got a oh. oh looking to the right side Holtz uh, skipped on that Holtz gonna keep it himself and it's still on his feet oh my goodness Vance Holtz he's turning he's turning a lot of those big runs that could be sacks into something here yeah doing pretty well here man he's, he's in he's in his body on the line I should say I, li I like Vance Holtz's quarterback skills he's a very good quarterback. Third and four. Here too, like I said again. From the 12-yard line, third and four. Two wide receivers on the right, two guys on the left for Maguana, uh, for Arrowhead. One guy in the backfield. Folks away in the snap. Looks over to the sideline real quick. They got to get to about the eight. They got to get to the eight-yard line for a first down. Everyone allowed here in Maguana go. He's trying to discuss something with his wide receiver all the way to the right there. Time out. Timeout. Maguana go. No, oh, timeout Arrowhead. Oh, I heard yeah, timeout yeah. Warhawks. S smart, because if you can't get your play figured out, don't go out there and force an interception or something. Go like out there and talk it over with your coach. We got a wide receiver to the right right there. Had a little trouble getting to hear the play for Vance Holtz here. It's pretty loud in the stadium. Yeah, fans like to turn out here in Waukesha County. One of the best turnout spots in the state. It's playoff football as well here. Best time of the year. For high school football, for high school sports right now, we got a big couple more weeks here, and then in about a month we'll be at Camp Randall. Yeah, actually State a little bit less. Uh, November's yeah, about a month. Yeah, you're right. Less than a few days, less than a month, but to be exact, if I want to be that perfectionist on the radio here, but oh wow. Good. Gotta love scores. Scores rolling across the state, ladies and gentlemen. Tune in after the game to 9:20 a.m. in the Milwaukee area. This goes as we're on the Just a Game stream for McGuana Go. Tune in at 9.20 a.m. in Milwaukee at 9.30 p.m. Starting with Chuck Freeman and Dan Pfeiffer on the radio. They go over scores and callers around the state of Wisconsin. 
Anyway, third and four now for the 12 yard line for Arrowhead. The second quarter, 208 left here in the second quarter. Two wide receivers on the right, two guys on the left, one guy in the backfield. Holtz hands it off up the middle. Pushing up the middle and gonna be stopped short. Really? I don't know, we'll see. I think it's a first. I, actually, it might be a first. Let's see what the chains do. Yep. First down, Arrowhead. Nice nice run up the middle there by Jacob Center. Center once again. He's been the powerhouse there on offense. So they, it's going to be first and goal from the 12. Wait. Eight yard line. Eight yard line. First and goal from, six yard first line. And goal from the bad. six. Arrowhead looking to go ahead before halftime here. And they, they need it too. They don't get. McGuire gets the ball to start the second half. So they need a big tough score to put him up. Holtz. Hands it off up the middle. Is he in? He's going to be just short. I think at the one. Signer on a carry once again. Center. Second and goal for the Warhawks from the two now. I think if you're Arrowhead right now, here you, you chew a lot of clock off right here so you don't give McGuanago a chance right before the half. Obviously, you're giving you're gifting McGuanago the ball. I mean, to start the second half as they deferred for the second half, McGuanago. But this would be a huge touchdown right here. If Vance Holtz or Sinner can pull it in for yep. Arrowhead. Second and goal for the two. Holtz yep. going to keep himself again. He is. Touchdown. Is he a touchdown, Arrowhead? Touchdown. And Arrowhead's going to have the lead. Six. Oh, they already put 17 on the board. <laughs> unanswered. 17, 16, 16 unanswered points for McGuanago. Arrowhead oh. goes up now. What a way to come back in this game. You talk about a momentum shift, Matt Peck. That is one right there. And you're, I mean, if you get a, you got to get one big stop right here. Obviously, McGuana going on a pass heavy team. Stop that run game a little before the half. You're up three points at the half. You, I mean, coming in the second quarter, they were down 7 14 0, and now, wow. Wow. Seven, 16 unanswered and looking for 17 here, depending on the extra point attempt by number 17, Burke Phillips. And kick is good. Kick is good. So it's going to be 17 to 14. Arrowhead has the lead now. With 102 left here in the second quarter, we will go on a quick game break, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School. Arrowhead grabs the lead with Matt Peck alongside Elijah Vink Salata. We behalf to Max Preps and Game Mike Break, right, Radio Broadcast here in Wisconsin. Just the game live as well yeah. for TV. Just the game live of McGuanago as well. We are on today. Thanks to all those Classic 8 schools that let us come on their Just the, just the Game live stream. McGuanago, Muskego, so Kettle Won't Marine. be our last. Won't be our last, that's for sure. Taken out from about the 5-yard line. Out across the 10 to the 15, out to the 20. Taken down at the 25, out to about 28-yard line. Laguanago's offense will come out with 56 seconds left here in the half. Their goal is going to try to be getting into field goal territory. There's not enough time, I don't think, for a touchdown. But First and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Laguanago needs to <laughs> get something moving here. They just Arrowhead just scored 17 unanswered points. <laughs> I mean, they're starting to move things. The chains have switched drastically in this game. I'm really vibing with this 17 unanswered run by Arrowhead here. They're showing all the energy now after McGuanago showed all, all of it in the first half. Arrowhead, or McGuanago, they're going to have to find a way here to try to get themselves right back in the game. They get the ball after half, but maybe try to put some points on before the half with only 55 seconds left. Anyways, Schalt hands up the middle to... Which time was that? That was the backup, right? Gage Tower. Gage Tower on that play. So the clock's going to run down. Now. Looks I think like they're just going to run it. McGuanago is going to play safe ball. Looks like I don't think they're going to do nothing too special here. Get the ball at halftime. Yeah. So Arrowhead's going to go into the half with that lead though. But they start out down 14 to nothing. That's actually impressive as a team to see that happen. I. But Arrowhead going into the year, they had a lot of. They were ranked two in the downs. preseason rankings of Wiss Sports. It's so, been that type of year too. Yeah. Handing it off the middle once again and going nowhere. So I think that's going to take us into halftime, ladies and gentlemen. 
players get up, and it's going to be a that's going to be a halftime score, ladies and gentlemen. Arrowhead, though, coming back, 17 on They're, answered they're getting that 17, 14. So those folks from Harlan up, and we will head to a quick game break on the next prep stream. But just a game, we'll be muted the whole halftime. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the guy I picked up hitchhiking on the way here is going to give us some score updates. No, I'm just kidding, Elijah. Hard, <laughs> hard guy that broadcasts. Okay, okay. We like to make jokes a lot. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. Elijah's going to give you guys some score updates at All halftime right. around in, the state. In Division One, the number two seed, Franklin, leads the seventh seed, Bradford, 31 to zero in the second quarter. Oak Creek, the three seed, leads Indian Trail, seven to zero. Or the three seed, Oak Creek, leads the six seed, Indian Trail. 7 to 0. 803 left here to go in the second quarter and that one the winner takes on Franklin Bradford which is liking like Franklin. We got Kimberly, number 1 seed against number or number 2 seed against the number 7 seed Appleton North. Kimberly only leads 10 to 0 at the half. Bayport the 2 seed or 3 seed leads Waukee Riverside 36 to 0 at the half. West Appear in Division 2 leads Menominee Falls 13-0 at the half. I'm trying to see some more here. Right, I got one here for you guys. Uh, De Pere's athletic director Jeff Bizek just tweeted out that De Pere leads 28 to 8 over Milwaukee Marshall, who's the one seed. So, quote unquote upset going on there. <laughs> and a big shootout game we got here in D1. Four first five seed here. Nina leads DC Everett 28 to 14 in the second quarter. And a scroll down here. Cedarburg leads 
Hortonville, 13 to seven at the half. I'm gonna scroll down even more. A game we're keeping a lot in here. Check in with Zaleski Sports on YouTube tonight. Kakana, the number one seed, leads or is tied with Brookfield Central, the eight seed, 14 to 14 in the second quarter. Here they're getting pretty late in the second quarter there. Matt Peck, you got any other score? Oh uh, yeah, for um, let's go. Um, 21-7 Beaver Dam leaves Slinger at what uh, second quarter? That was 15 minutes ago though. I'm not sure how much more of an update I got from that. In Homest at Homestead, we got 21-14 in that Slinger game, by the way. Yep, at Homestead we got them. Homestead taking on Pulaski, 15 to seven at the half. And trying to see if we got any more big score updates here. Let's check in and see how. Uh, okay. <laughs> what's up? Nothing. Oh. Let's go. I'm like, no, I like the, I like the team that you were searching. <laughs> so I, I, we actually haven't talked much about them, which actually is a really good team to show. It, it might be crucial to the teams that we're calling right now here. McWanago versus Arrowhead. We're going to check in on Verona here, depending on if my Wi-Fi could load. And if, if, if you're any of you guys Bucks fans here right now, the Bucks are trailing the Grizzlies at the half, 58 to 52. And before you guys freak out, it's preseason. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Matt Peck might be at the Pfizer Forum next Thursday, depending yeah, on our student uh, tickets. That depends how cheap it is. Yep. Just I'm not the one to go out there and spend um, $700 on the court side. Nah, we're seat. paying 20 bucks though if it's upper level. Oh, I'm paying 20 bucks. <laughs> That's pretty much all we got right now for score updates, though, Matt Peck. It was a nice tribute. I meant to, I like to mention before the game, like we did towards um, head coach, uh, the head former Arrowhead head coach. For the game, that was nice of all the whole stadium to do with Tom Traska before the game. Kind of why did that slip my mind? I'm so sorry about that. But we were, we did a nice um tribute for, for him before the game. So did they at McGuanago High School. That shows that this this conference is connected. We love it. That's very well known head coach. I'm going to try to clip it later so that way get it away from the broadcast so that it's only the coach Tom Taraska tribute part. I think it was about three or four minutes long. We, we had a nice message that was sent to us from Coach Matt Harris of Arrowhead who gave us the pointers of what he liked about or what he remembers about him, which was awesome. I totally appreciate him for that. I will go talk to him about that after the game. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're gonna go a little bit more on a game break for about three minutes and maybe come back because there's eight minutes left here at Emma High School during the halftime. Let's go five. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike.
What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike. What's up, everyone? Thanks for listening in to Game Mike. Action should resume as soon as your broadcaster is ready to go. This is Game Mike. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School. 17-14 lead. We're about to take the third quarter. Arrowhead has the lead, the number five seed over the number four, McGuanago. Arrowhead coming back with 17 unanswered points. Just that, after McGuana going up 14 nothing, and Arrowhead fumbled the ball. I mean, that, quite a turnaround there for Arrowhead. I'll, I'll just say that to be the least. I mean, they're the, they're the good dominating football team I remember as a little kid watching right here. Same thing used with McGuana go too. Used, used to love watching Arrowhead versus Franklin back then. Used to love watching Arrowhead play Kimberly at the state championship. Those were the days, man. McGuanago, fo good football program as well. Mike and Avak, um, coach. And Matt Harris, the coach of Arrowhead. Came in, I think, a few years ago, if I'm to be exact. I'm not Plastic sure which Eight year. is just that stat conference. 
both of these teams, obviously they can't, they're not at the top this year, but they, they are still really good teams that I, I think could both teams, if whoever advances this game can make some noise here, they're going to have to face a really good passing team in Sussex Hamilton with Tyler Hatcher there next week. If Yeah. What's the score of that game uh, with uh, Sussex uh, let Hamilton? Me let me check. Were they up by a lot? I I only got, saw a 7 nothing. I don't know, Ooh. though. Yeah, they, they only post, posted one touchdown score there. Wow. But Sun Prairie West earlier in the year, they were they were four and zero to start the year until they played West. So until they, they played East. Let's see, they want to make that drive somewhat worth it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean they're coming all the way from Medicine area. So let's see here. Um, what's Sussex Hamilton? Still got three minutes till kickoff. Yeah, so I thought we'd just come back and talk because you know it's better than just sit unless you guys listen to the music in the background. So we have the game mic music. Yeah, even though it's not bad music. No. All right, let's click football here. Let's see if score streams got something. Oh, Sussex Hamilton up 27 to seven at the half. So there's been a reason why there's no score updates. So never. So it's looking likely that whoever wins this game is gonna go to Sussex next week. So it's probably like likely last. Can't really say who it is gonna be at here though. Yeah, this it's been a really close game here, but Airhead's got the big momentum. Yeah, coming out of the first half, that's for sure. I mean, T. Let's just say that they did the impossible. Well, there. And the players come off the field, and McGuanago is still stretching. Arrowhead is hyped. They look like they're ready to go to start this second half. <laughs> they're fired up. Everybody they're... here. And then you look at McGuanago's side. They're just yeah. stretching here. They're just trying to get right back in this game, obviously. The, good, the one positive part to McGuanago is they get the ball after half. So they need to do something. Otherwise, because the way Arrowhead's moving the ball now, <laughs> Arrowhead could push away quick. But Arrowhead needs to keep moving the ball that way, too, as well. As we watch Vance Holtz warm up there on the sideline. I always I watch the kids. I watch a few of his highlight videos. He is just phenomenal. He goes to what a D1 college every weekend and visits like on the side. I've I'm seen him at Minnesota, him Wisconsin. I mean, the kid's gonna get recruited somewhere good, and that's what I like to see out of in-state players get recruited somewhere good. But look at Arrowhead. They got um Garrett Sexton on a team Penn State commit. Um, Chase Gilbert, Iowa State commit. Uh, missing one more. Who's the other one? What position? Ah, let me look at the roster real quick. I'm missing him. What's his name? Derek Jensen. Derek Jensen is his name. I think he's at Penn State as well. Yeah, because um, James Franklin was at one of Arrowhead's games a few weeks Talk ago. Talk about the helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. <laughs> they, when they were playing Muskego, they come check on his recruits. How about this, though? If, if Arrowhead can get this win today here, they get to upset the team that made the state last year. Obviously, Wanago, they don't have Winstang anymore as he graduated. But uh, this game's not over yet. This is a really big dogfight here. 14 nothing. It's been very one-sided depending on the quarter so far. I mean, McWanago, the first quarter, they had 14 to start this game. Then Arrowhead, they scored 17 unanswered points. Who will this third quarter be dominated by? It's just that type of game so far here yeah. today. We got a good finish here. That means don't fall asleep on us, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening on Game Mike, do not fall asleep. Yeah, everybody share this game out. This share. is a really close game. Hartley, McGuanago, Merton, you name it. Uh, you know you know, both these teams are going to put a dogfight out in this one. This winner go home now. Yep. So the last game for some of these players. Yeah, so my heart goes out to those seniors who were playing their last game around the oh, state last night. Tonight. Looking on the sideline right now, number 84 on Arrowhead. Sam Schneider, wide receiver, the guy that got injured in the first half in crutches right now. Looks like he won't be returning with us today. Oh, yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. Big blow there on the wide receiver room for Arrowhead. Very unfortunate. Hate to see that for a player in the playoffs. That's just just heartbreaking. To He's a senior, too, but yeah. it's hopefully his team can fight him forward here as we begin the second half. And the kick is away, and it'll be bounced in the end zone for a touchback as he tried to take it out of the end zone on the bounce. So McGonagall will start on the 20-yard line of their own. Down 17-14 here at the beginning of the third quarter. Tyler Schultz offense comes back on the field. He's got quite a few weapons around him, but they got to start being used now. Because down three after giving 17 unanswered to Arrowhead. That shows a sign that Arrowhead's starting to move. And they're starting to get back to their early season stuff. And getting back, Arrowhead's early season stuff is dangerous for any playoff team. 
Anyways, first and 10 for the 20. Two wide receivers on the left. One guy motioning now back to the right. Schultz is going to keep it himself. No toss it to the left. Never mind. He's going to take it himself. Take it down. It's going to be a gain of nothing on the play. I think he tried to roll. So what he was Schultz was trying to do right there was roll his left right there, try maybe get a toss in, fake it, and try to keep it himself. But they just got too many defenders there. No lineman on that left side unblocked. Very good play right there by Arrowhead's defense to start off the second half. Score up there here. Kimberly up 10-7 on Ooh. Appleton North. 6.31 left in the third quarter. Close game out there. That's live on Post Crescent USA Today Network on YouTube. Second 11 for the McGonagall's goes own 19-yard line. Two wide receiver on the right. One guy's going to motion now to the left. Schall gets a snap. Going to roll to the right. Looking to pass. Looking pass to the right side is going to be oh. incomplete. And a flag is thrown. Ooh. Kind of a late one there. Taken down. Santonio Martin, the sophomore, on the coverage right there. He, he got a little pull to the jersey there on Mason Kelly. That should set him first down there. Pretty good call by the refs there at, the, at that time. Penalty's on the 15 yard penalty on Arrowhead. So now McGuanago will get the ball first at 10 at their own 35 after the pass interference on Kim, um, Arrowhead. I almost said Kimberly. <laughs> they look just like Kimberly out there sometimes to me. Yep. First to 10 for the 35. 11-15 just getting started here in the third quarter. Arrowhead leads 17-14 in this game. One wide receiver motioning down to the left. Shaw looking to pass, looking downfield. He might got him beat deep, and it's going to be incomplete, overthrown. That I think, was. I think if you're Tyler Schlott on that play right there, he was going He was going right away to throw that ball. you got to wait just like a second or two longer, and then he can go for Mason Kelly again there. Same coverage right there again by number 18 on Arrowhead, Santino Martin, the sophomore. It's a sophomore coverage. And sophomore playing some good refs up here for Arrowhead. Yep, so second and 10 now from the 35-yard line. 11-10 left here in the third quarter. Arrowhead leads 17-14. McGuanago will set up the line of scrimmage with one wide receiver on each side. Now one guy motioning now back to the left side. They get that arrowhead guy on him. They switch guys. Now he's going to motion back to the right. Kind of playing that protective offense there. Trying to play that trick offense. Arrowhead playing right on the man, man to man line of scrimmage. Schultz gets the snap. Looking to pass. It's going to be sacked. Take it down. Wow. A missed block there on McGuanago's offense. The guy goes right through to take down Schultz. Coming out of the gate, Brandon Foley that time on the sack. Unblocked and he came out of nowhere right away. Something he had time to throw that ball. Very good blitz run right there by Airhead's defense. How about that? The momentum picking up right where they left off for the Airhead Warhawks, Matt. So, third and 19 now from McGuanago. They would need something spectacular to get a first down here. They got to get to the 45 yard line to get a first down. They have the ball in their own 26. So, two wide receivers on the left. One quarterback waiting to snap, one guy in the backfield. Schultz awaiting the snap. He's definitely going to pass here, or unless he's going to play safe ball. Yeah, look for Mason Kelly right here, your star wide receiver. Schultz going to yep, roll the left, looking downfield. Pass is going to be incomplete. Oh. And McGuanago is going to have to punt. Not the way you want to start off if you're McGuanago there. Looks like Schultz was looking for Mason Kelly on the slot route that time again right there. And then that's not a good drive from Schultz right there. He's trying to go deep with Mason Kelly on that first play. Couldn't find him as he went too early throwing the ball. Now he overthrows Kelly again, this time on a slot route here. Now it's fourth and 19 and a big sack on the drive for Arrowhead. Everything going right so far to start the second half for Arrowhead now. Yep. So now McGuanago will punt it away. It's going to be taken about the 42-yard line out across the 45 to the 50 oh. to the 40. Down to the 35 to the 30. Clear oh. down the field. He's going to take it away. Touchdown, Arrowhead. Oh my wow. goodness! Arrowhead! Colton Harry on the tackle again there. Unbelievable. Arrowhead, wow! You got this game in control right now. Arrowhead down 14 nothing. It's now up 23 to 14. Devastation here in McGuanico. But what wow. a run back there. Wow. Talk Cheers right out here in the press box as well. Talk about a big kickoff punt return there. And he even had a big kick return in the first half here, breaking a tackle and getting an extra 20 yards. Now he just got off the loose here. No every good blocks. 
And now the kick is up. We're at 24 to 14 now, All Matt. Right. We're gonna go to game break 24-14. Arrowhead leads. Back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School for a WIA playoff level one matchup here. Number five, McGuanago, or my number five, Arrowhead now leads. Number four, McGuanago, 24 to 14, with 10 2 left here to go in the third quarter here. Big second half start here. Force a three and out. Arrowhead get a kick return. Big kick return touchdown by number four, Colton Harriot, the senior wide receiver here for 65 yards. And now Arrowhead, 24 unanswered points, 24 to 14. Now the score. All right. Oh shoot! <laughs> you forgot the ball. Whatever we, you know what? It's not like we missed a touchdown call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this time we didn't miss it. Yeah, against Calumarine we did. So kicking it off now. Arrowhead up 24 to 14. So now with 10:02 remaining in the in the third quarter, Arrowhead's gonna kick it off to up 10 now. What a turn of events here. So McGuana goes gonna take it. It, and oh, it's going to be returned at about the goal line to the yeah. 15 out to the 20 stays on his feet oh. down to about the 21 yard line and now is when McGuanago needs to come out and do something down 10 now after the arrowhead punt return they need something now because if they fail a possession again I mean it's going to be, McGuanago needs to get down and get at least a field goal. I think right now, if you're McGuanago, you got to go back to what you did in that first quarter, run the ball at Gage Tower, the senior right there. He's been doing really good, just getting extra yards here. Now, let's see what they do. Yep. And running up the middle, and going to go about gain of one or two on the play. Anyways, oh. ladies and gentlemen, for those on the Just the Game stream, the McGuanago High School Boys Volleyball Team up 3-2 to two on Burlington right now. And uh, I think the regional or sectional for boys volleyball right now. I thought I would share that. It came from McGuanago Athletics Twitter. Yeah, for those on our... On the right just inside. The, yeah, right inside here for those on the Just a Game stream that are McGuanago fans. I thought I would share that. I just came across my Twitter. So second and seven from the 25-yard line. For McGuanago, two wide receivers on the left. Wait the snap. One guy motions, gets the snap, hands it off up the middle, pushing up the middle. He's going to be avoids a tackle. Now oh gets the first goodness. down, down to the 35-yard line. A little bit down to about the 32 now. Just pounded forward, Gage Tower again right there for McGuanago. First down, big run there. Like I said, they got to keep going right back to the run game. And I know it's going to take some time off the clock here, but that punt return touchdown saved them a lot of time right there. They could, they could use a good amount of time right here to get in enemy territory right now. So first and 10 now, McGuanago from the 37-yard line. Trailing by 10 is McGuanago with 8.50 left here in the third quarter. Two wide receivers on the right, no guys on the left. One guy in the backfield, which Schultz. Mason Kelly is going to get the snap. Hit. Throws it to Mason Kelly, tosses it on the right side, stays on his feet, down to about the 40-yard line, gain him about... Uh, five on the play. So McGuanago playing, trying to play the trickery a little bit there. The tackle by Ashton Bauman right there. Another jet toss play from Schlutt to Mason Kelly. A lot of motion work here. Motion mans for McGuanago here. It's a lot of Mason Kelly. You got guys like number 10, Tanner Booth. Buff on the tack, or uh, the wide receiver. Second and seven now for the 40 from McGuanago. One wide receiver set up on each side, one guy in the backfield. Schultz sends a guy over to motion. Hands it off, Schultz up the middle, cutting to the left side. He might break open, down just over the 50 yard line. He's gonna get the first down, gain, down about the 49 yard line. Gage Tower, now he's activating his juke moves out. Gage Tower, man, it's been a good game for him. They haven't used him too much in the second quarter. Like I said, they got to use them a lot more in the second half. They have done that so far. Now the ball's on their own 49, driving down the field. So, 
First and ten now from Iguanago from the 49 yard line. Up, trailing by ten is Iguanago still. 24 14 with 7.30 left here in the third quarter. So one guy on each side, one guy in the backfield for Maguanago. Will they motion again? Yes, they will. Schultz gets the snap, hands off to the left oh, side. He he's going to go down, downfield with the pass. He's going to have him. Jacob. Wait, he caught oh. it. He, he, oh. caught it. he didn't look like he caught that at first, but yeah. Downfield down to the 10 wow. Talk about a player. Hold on one second. Talk about a player right there. It was Tyler Schultz handing it off to the motion man. Mason Kelly getting it right there and handed it off on the jet sweep. And Kelly stays on the line of scrimmage. Complete the deep pass to number 17. Nick Martin right there, wide receiver. That's a big momentum shifter possibly right there. Yeah, that was good you know, play call right there. From the angle I had sitting here, it did not look like he caught it at first. Just the way he fell down. Very good play call by Mike Ganovich. Right there from Aguanago. Set him up inside the 10 now. That's not the smartest thing I've done. Oh, trickery right there. So, first and goal from the four-yard line from Iguanago. Trailing by 10 with seven minutes left here in the third quarter. They set up with one wide receiver left, one guy in the backfield. Schultz keeps it himself up the middle. He is in with the touchdown, Iguanago. Brings it within six. Brings it within eight now. Four, 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 four. <laughs> And how about that though? That's just the momentum shift that you need if you're McWanna go bring a trick play. Mike Ganelvich runs that jet sweep to Mason Kelly to find his wide receiver down the field, number 17 once again. Nick Martin inside the, to the five yard line first and goal and they get a touchdown there from Schultz. Now. The kick is up and it's good. It's a 24-21 game here now. We got a shootout here ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we got a shootout here. Stay tuned, we will have the game break for about 30 seconds. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School. McGuanago scores a touchdown. I think a QB sneak there. So 24-21 now. But Arrowhead's offense, as the last few plays they've had, possession on offense has done something with the football. So not a sigh of relief quite yet. If they can get a stop here, it would be. But Arrowhead last yet to have the ball in the second half. They ran back a punt return last time they touched the ball in the second half. So that's what really got sway a mo momentum but now it sways the other way so we'll see what happens here the Maguana is going to kick it away it's going to be in the in the end zone so coming out to the 20 yard line is Arrowhead's offense Vance Holtz on the field for the first time in the third quarter today got a little help from that kick return touchdown to start the second half and now they got a little cushion three point lead now Obviously, it's, there's nothing comfortable right now as they're only up by three, but this game is really a shootout right now. That's for sure. So we're Only halfway through the third quarter and almost. Yeah, so first and ten now for the 20-yard line for Arrowhead's offense. They will set up with two wide receivers on each side, one guy in the backfield next to Holtz. First and ten for the 20, trail up by three still is Arrowhead, 24-21. Holtz gets a snap. Going to hand it off with up the middle taken down. Second and four about. We get a quick score update here. Kakana now retakes the lead 20 to 14 in the third quarter over Brookfield East, the eighth seed. It's a game that could put we could put on upset watch here, but Kakana, I think they could roll away with this one. Yep, so upset that actually one. DePierre is beating um Milwaukee uh, whatever uh, Washington anyways. Pass over the middle for Arrowhead, caught on the right side, down to about the 32 yard line. It's gonna be close. I think they might give him the first down. Yes, they do. First down, Arrowhead. Nice play there, designed by Vance Holtz. Catching the guy right by the sideline there. Nice drawn route there. It's down to the 42-yard line. It's a first down for Arrowhead. 
First, the 32 yard line, that's what I meant to say. Two wide receivers on the left, one guy on the right, one guy in the backfield. Away in the snap, gets a snap, holds, hands it off to the left side, taken down right well that time by McGuanago's defense. That was Jacob Sinner taken down once again. Wow. <laughs> Somebody be milking cows later. <laughs> so second and thirteen now from the twenty-nine yard line. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> second and thirteen for the twenty-nine yard line. Two wide receivers handing off Holtz once again off to the up the middle, cutting to the left side. To end it, first down. Look at Arrowhead, that. Down center. to forty-eight. Just breaking through tackles, juking and everybody out. And after that big stop from Wanago, Arrowhead gets a break from Jacob Sinner, getting a really big run up there to put him up the middle at their own 47-yard line now. But I like this pretty balanced offense here, running the ball a little bit with Sinner, passing the ball with Vance Holtz, and even running with Vance Holtz a couple times. This offense is looking pretty solid for Arrowhead after that first quarter. Ever since that, that's looked really smooth for them. So Holtz going to hand it off again up the middle. And pushing, oh. it's going to be read pretty well that time by Mokwana go. Down, taken down about the 45 yard line. Number six that time. Connor Krager just pulling down Jacob Sinner. Sorry, right got, there. got distracted there. The, the bench, is, bench is clearing in the ALCS distracted me, so <laughs> the video. So I try to refresh my screen, so that's not on there no more. Anyways, second and nine for the 48 yard line. Four arrowhead, two wide receiver on the left. Holtz gets a snap, look at the pass, look at the left. Pass to the left side is caught. Take it down by the legs, though, but hangs on for the just short of the first down for Arrowhead, down to about the 45 in the McGuanago territory. A beautiful catch by Harper Hughes right there and able to hold on as a big hit to the legs right there from a McGuanago defender. And Harper Hughes was able to just hold on to that ball there. It's going to be third and short, though, now. Let's see what they got going on here. Maybe a QB draw up the middle with. Oh, timeout. Timeout. We'll see what. Arrowhead's going to draw up now here on third and short. Third and one. So, anyways, we'll stay with you. What do you, what do you got for some score updates on that computer? Because why take us to game break? Uh, let's oh. see if my computer can load here. Kimberly, I, I remember this still there in the fourth quarter right now. Still leading Appleton North 10-7. to seven. Wouldn't it be something Appleton North could pull it oh, off? Oh, yeah, the reigning champions. They, could, they might go down in Division One. Appleton North's always been known to be that sneaky football team. They a lot. The, the only time that I saw them struggle is when they couldn't beat Franklin twice yeah. th a few years ago. I mean, and they were one of those teams that could make it far into the playoffs before, too. Yeah, they're, one of, those, they're one of those best teams in the Fox Valley right now, up there. Um, for sakes around here, Franklin up big still. I don't, I don't have a score in that game. To Anyways, 31 for the 44-yard line for Arrowhead. Two hours receiver on the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield. Holtz away in the snap. Gets the snap. Hands it off up the middle. And he's going to be taken down, short of the first it. down. They run it well that time, McGuana go. And what does Arrowhead do here? I think they got a punt, but... I don't know. You're, don't you're know. in enemy territory right here. Take a chance right and now. You're and you're on the road. And you're on the road. That's always a good one to point out. When you're on the road, you do different things. But you got about uh, just a little under four minutes left. You're going on third quarter. Do you want to take a chance here? Matt's whole staying on the field. He's discussing with Matt Harris something right now, though. And the cowbell. <laughs> Fourth and two. From the 45 yard line. They lose a yard that time. Two wide receivers on the right, one guy in the back. They're going to go for it here. Airheads like, why not? Holtz hands it off. They'll keep themselves along the right side. That first down easily. And he's going to. Oh, look at Oh, my it. goodness. Down to the 30 yard line. Wow. Man, Holtz right there. Look at that extra effort after the spin move. He put his defender in a spin cycle right there, and he got an extra five to eight yards on that one, and now. Now they're on the 31 of Mukawana going a big fourth down conversion there for Arrowhead. Yeah, so they get a little bit more than they need to, but you know what? If you're the offense, you're not complaining. You need the yards that you can get at that moment. Holt's got to watch it, though. Like, he doesn't want to go down, though, but you don't want to force a fumble after committing, getting a good first down. That would be just devastating to them. Anyways, one wide receiver set by each guy, one guy in the backfield. Holt's looking to pass. Fumble! Ball out! Who's got it? McGuana go! Wait a minute! They're blowing the play dead in the fleet as um the ball wow. came forward. I don't know. Oh they can't close one. They can't change it now because he could have ran it back with They got reviews either. 
They don't got reviews, so they oh, gotta they gotta stick with the call on the field in high school. Can, can, can the coach? No, I don't think. Can th Coach Nevich challenge? I don't think he can appeal. No, I don't think no. It, unless it's a state tournament. I don't think so. No. Anyways, yeah, Arrowhead. Is, will they keep, only got reviews here, so. So Arrowhead will keep the ball it. on second and ten for the thirty-one. That's crucial, though. McGuire needed that football back. Holtz hands it off up the middle, taken down. Jacob Sinner once again. It's going to be about third and seven. Close. And you're in that territory too. If you come to a fourth down, even if it's a fourth and seven, you, I think if you're an arrowhead, you pass the ball. Third and six. The field. Third and six from the 27-yard line. Holtz gets a snap. Pass it right there. It's caught. Taken down. Let's see where they spot the ball. I think it's, it's going to be very close. Fourth down, just barely. Now you got to keep the offense on the field, though, if I'm Arrowhead. You got you're, not, the, you're not quite in a field goal like range deep inside there yet, but are they? Yeah, you're looking at a 40-yarder right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> Looks like Vance Holt stays on the field, though, with his offense. Fourth and two for the 23-yard line. Another big fourth down, Matt Beck. Yep. One wide receiver set up on each side. One guy in the backfield of Longside Holtz. McGonagall fans want to stop here. Timeout called. Timeout Arrowhead. They're going to talk it over. So, Got a couple scores. Scores have loaded up now for you, right? Yep. <coughs> All right. 38-0. to zero. Franklin leads over Bradford in the third quarter right now, I would assume. 10 to 0, Oak Creek Knights lead over the Indian Trail Warhawks. 10 to 0, Bayport leads over Milwaukee Riverside. 42 to 0 in the fourth quarter. West of Pier takes the, has a lead 20 to 0 in the third quarter. Over Menominee Falls, Kakana still leads 20 to 14 in the third quarter. I'm gonna look at some more here. Nina is closing in here. Third quarter, 34 to 14 on DC Everest. And another big game. We're still trying to keep an eye on here. The last one we're gonna update right now. Kimberly leads Appleton North 10 to 7 in hey, the fourth quarter. Search Kettle Marine for me. I like to just know Kettle what's going Marine, on in Kettle Marine. Right. We haven't talked about them yet. This is a conference, even though they're Division Two, so neither one. They won't play. It might be a minute, so after yeah. this play. All right. Well, we care more about what's on the field, yeah. so let's go on the field. Fourth and two for the 23-yard line for Arrowhead. One wide receiver on the right, one guy in the backfield. Holtz away the snap, gets a snap, holds to the left, looking downfield. Holtz oh, oh. downfield! It is going to be, is it caught? That's intercepted. It's oh, yeah, no, no, no. So, McGuanago will get the ball now. Austin Shulis right there on the breakup. Very good coverage there. It looked like Holtz could have aired it on a little bit more, and then that could have been a completed pass. Very big defensive play by McGuanago. Now they get the ball on their own. Let's see where they spot it. Now they're on 22-yard line. 23-yard line. So first and 10 will go on to go now from the 23-yard line of their own. They get the ball back. Stopping the moving arrowhead offense. They will settle one wide receiver set up on each side, one guy in the backfield. So gets the snap, hands it off up the middle, cut to the left side, still on his feet. Moving it deep down to the 38-yard line. Nice run there easily for a first stop from McGuanago. <laughs> my, I'm playing the motion with the cowbells here, <laughs> shaking my head back and forth. It's like, well, give it a rest. <laughs> I mean, you talk about something Maguanago fans can cheer about now. Yeah. First and 10 for the 38-yard line. Maguanago trails 24-21, has the ball back from their own 38 now. 115 left here in the third quarter. Two wide receivers on the right. Schultz gets the snap, hands it off up the middle. Better read that time by Arrowhead. Wait a minute. Yep, stopped on the line. I don't know why I said wait a minute there. Anyway. Kind of reminds me of what I have at home. <laughs> what do we got Seven, there? 17 6 in Oak Creek. It's Indian Trail trailing. Notice how they put that together? Ha ha ha. No, no, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Second and eight from the 40 yard line. One wide receiver on each side, one guy in the backfield. Shaw waits the snap. Let's see if he passes this time. Gets a snap. Runs it up the middle again to his running back. Pushing up the middle. Taken down just short of the third down. 
Just short of the first down, that's what I meant. So they will bring out. This is a tough moment here as we're going to run into the fourth quarter soon, any minute. It's anyone's game in the fourth quarter. That's the last quarter yes, sir. of either Arrowhead season or Maguanago season. So it's going to be the last quarter of someone's season, unless we see overtime, which it hasn't happened with us yet. So, so anyways, timeout. At the end of the third quarter, we will take a break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School Med Pack. Elijah makes a lot of currently out of the room at the moment. Had to run and go get something. Third and go, third and three from the 45-yard line for McGuanago. So gets the snap, hand, tosses to the right side, right around the right side. 50 down to the 45-yard line, flag on the field. It's likely going to be holding on McGuanago as we begin the fourth quarter here. I believe it's going to be holding on McGuanago. Let's see. What they call it. It's going to be McGuanago's moving back, so there'll be a holding call on McGuanago. So third, third and 13 from the 35 yard line now for McGuanago. They have to get to the 48 yard line, almost midfield, to get the first down. So let's see what kind of play they draw up here. For the 35 yard line, third and 13, 11.35 left here in the fourth quarter. Arrowhead leads 24-21. Here we go, let's see, two wide receivers on the left, one guy, on the one guy in the backfield. Schultz awaiting the snap, gets the snap, hands it off, up the middle, and he's gonna stop going nowhere. Arrowhead's defense comes up with a big play once again. Okay. Kellen Marine, last update, th up 38-7 and a half over Burlington, number eight seed Burlington. Burlington, one of those teams that struggled this year, took almost five games to win a game. So fourth and ten for McGuanagall, they're gonna have to punt it away, which is devastating. Yeah, not their good for them. Not good for them because now they have to stop Arrowhead's offense again. Was that three and out too? Um, I believe they. So there was a holding penalty, so. Ah. Uh. That, otherwise, they had a big first down. Anyways, here they come again with special teams. Some from the 30. Oh, down block. to the 35. Good block. They're taken down to the 36 oh, yard line. Oh, it's thrown. Oh, wow. I think that was a little late. If you're going to call it, yeah. you got to call it right away. You got to call it right away, yeah. Just can't wait two, th three to five seconds later. Yep, so, th so there's going to be a penalty now on on the field. Gonna be on number four, probably Colton Herio, the guy that had the kick return touchdown earlier in the game for Arrowhead. Yeah. Not doing the blocking, but, but I'm, I thought the I'm gonna mention that was a late play call, though. That was pretty good block, though. Yeah. Like hit, though. It was hard, though. That was what the ref did not throw the flag until literally the the guy that caught the ball was on the ground. So that was kind of a late flag to throw there. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta make the call right away if you really want that. Yeah, so first and 10 now from the 20 yard line for Arrowhead, up 24 21 with 10.58 remaining here in the fourth quarter. This could be a game deciding drive right here if they, Arrowhead could get a touchdown right here. Two wide receivers on the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield. And Holtz is gonna take himself up the middle. And oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, stay on his feet, he needs to get a bounce. 
<laughs> down to the 45 yard line. Almost at midfield already. Tell you what, man, this junior is so fun to watch. He just he ran into defenders right away, two yards after passing the line of scrimmage, and then he spun out once again, and he got all the way out to the 40. 43 yard line there and he got 23 on the carry out of that instead of getting only two talk about a fun player in Vance Holtz the quarterback for Arrowhead Alright so first and ten now from the 43 yard line two wide receivers on the right one guy in the left one guy in the backfield next to the quarterback Holtz Holtz gets a snap high snap handing it off up the left side cutting back to the middle of the field down to the 45 down to the 40 cutting out to the left outside 35 20 10 4 right oh. there. Down to the 10 yard line! And just, wow. as, and just as we get a Vance Holtz big run, we get a. Oh, we got an injured player on the field here. Terry O, the wide receiver. But talk about the big run right there. A Jacob Sinner now getting. breaking a tackle inside the 20 to put him on the 9 yard line right there of the oh. And now they're driving down the field for a potential touchdown now. So yeah, first and goal now from the nine yard line for Arrowhead. What a big run there. And the avoided tackles there is what made it even better. I gotta give that kid credit, he is fast. Right when you saw him go out <laughs> at the 40, he just took off. Man, we could use that speed on the, the Packers back this yeah. Sunday. <laughs> Tree's a track star too. He's got, gotta be a track Arrowhead, star. Arrowhead, very good at track as well. State champions as track a team. Field. I believe last year, right? In the last couple of years, actually. Last three years? Yes, last three years. And they were state runner-ups in basketball last year. Um, there's a lot of things I'm missing, though, Their because they won, the, too. they won the Wiss Sports Cup of School of the Year and the Max Press Cup of School of the Year in Wisconsin, so they had a lot of success in athletics last year, all led by their athletic director, Ryan Manigan. You got a really good athletics mm -hmm. program there. Love their football stadium too. The nice press, press box. box. Yeah. Anyways, one day. One day. Day. One day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. First and goal for the nine yard line. 24 21 lead for Arrowhead. They have first and goal from the nine with 10, 10 remaining in this game. Had a chance to go up 10. Holtz runs up the middle. Flag thrown. And he's going to take it in. He's going to get it for the touchdown right now, but there's a flag on the field. Back. I think it's going to come back. It's holding. So Holtz in for now. A legal shift on, on the offense, so it's going to come back now. First and goal now from the 14-yard line for Arrowhead. We've seen them do some impressive things tonight, so... Nothing would shock me here if they can get in easily. But McGuanagos all defenses needs to stop now. Ten minutes left in the game, you're down by three. If you go down by ten, you could be in an amount of trouble. Let's just say that. McGuanagos had a very early start, 14-0. But ever since, Arrowhead now up 24-21. Anyways, Vance Holtz gets the snap. Cutting on the right side. Taken down. And that's the running back Jacob Seiner once again. He's had a few big runs today. Taken down by Gage Tower of McGuanago. <laughs> Who was also the running back. Yeah, so. For McGuanago. Kids out there doing many things. Reminds me of Drew Wagner of Kettle Moran. Yeah, doing it all both sides. Yeah. Got to give credit to those guys playing the whole game. Anyways. Vance Holtz looking, pass the right side, it is! Wait a minute, incomplete! Yep. Very good coverage. Almost hauled in though. Very good coverage right there by number 24, McGuanago. That's Marshawn Sanders, the defensive back, the 11th junior. So now third down and goal from the 11 for Arrowhead. You need a big stop right here if you're McGuanago, keep him to one possession. Yes, they, they, they desperately need a stop here if you're McGuanago. Can't Nine for a touchdown at this point in the game. 9.28 left here in this game. This would be really hard if they do get a touchdown right here. You're only going to have nine minutes left to get... And Holt's going to take himself up uh, the middle. Gonna... Taken down at about the seven, it looks like. Seven or eight, I think. Now, you got a really interesting decision here. Fairhead's offensive coordinator. Do you, do you 
bring the field goal unit on the field right now, or do you go for here it's only seven yards away on a fourth and goal I'm, and try to potentially seal the deal? I'm going to see what they're going to do. I'm no coordinator, so I'm not going to... Timeout called. Just, just saying the options. Just saying. Yeah, saying the options. I, I don't want to, like... Predict I'm, not I'm not calling it. I'm just no, saying. no, no. You can call. I'm just yeah. saying. I don't. I'm not good at predicting in these situations. I don't actually don't know what I would do in this situation. Trying to become Tony Romo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like it. I like it. Remember, remember his first few years of calling. We, we work with CBS and yeah. Sound and Max Prep, so technically we can consider ourselves yeah. co-workers with him. Eh, not really, but <laughs> yeah. But fourth and goal now from the seven yard line. Anyway, uh, why don't you feed us some? Score stream. If it loads, I'd love to see if my computer loads. Once. You probably got better. Well, I have my hotspot connected with my charger, yeah. so. By the time I get there, though, everyone will be back on the field, so. Fans getting loud here, it looks like. Nope. Oh, now I'm logged out. Never mind. You know what? Alright, let's get back to the play yeah, let's here. Get, let's get back to the game that's in front of us. I'll get it one, once it loads up. Fourth and goal from the seven yard line for Arrowhead. Coming back on the field. They need to play the game right here. Yeah, it looks like Vance Holter's staying out too. They're not bringing out field goal. They want, they want the two Fourth. possession game. Fourth and goal from the seven yard line for Arrowhead. Three wide receiver to the left. One guy on the right, one guy in the backfield alongside Holtz. Holtz gets the snap. Looking right. Going to the end zone. It is. Incomplete. No flags either. No flags. So McGuanago is going to take over with 9 2 left. And talk about the picture perfect coverage once again. That's. Marshawn Sanders once again breaking up a pass on the slot. Back to back plays. Talk about a drive from the junior right there. To save the McWanago Indian season. Marshawn Sanders, ladies and gentlemen. So now, 24 21, McWanago will come back on the field trailing by three. This is important to note the score because. They got to go quite a ways to get the score in. This could be a long drive, too. That could cut down the time a lot here. First and 10 for the 7. Schultz awaiting the snap. Gets the snap. Hands it off. Up the middle to the left side. Still his feet. Take it down about the 20. It's going to be, it looks like a first down. And some more, too. A couple more, too. Put him at the 19-yard line, 12-yard gain right there by Gage Taher. So that's Busy a man tonight taking over for the injured Mason Rydebecky. So actually, first down and 10 from the 19 for McGuanago. 8.45 left here. McGuanago trails 24-21. McGuanago the 4 seed. Arrowhead the 5 seed. So first to 10 for the 19. One wide receiver to the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield. It's been a thriller to be here tonight at McGuanago High School. Let's, get, let's see how the last eight minutes end up. Gets the snap. Tossing to the right side. Cross the 20 to the 25. Pushed near out of bounds there. It's going to be about second and four for McGuanago. Pretty good blocks there, too, by McGuanago's lineman right there. And like I said, again, they're missing Nathan Roy, their star lineman. Minnesota commit, best lineman in the state. And just a really good play right there to block. Get a couple yards, seven yards on the play there. McGuanago, just take your time right now. If you score a touchdown on this drive and take it your time, you might have a game winner. If you can get a touchdown on this one. Yep, so second and three now from the 26-yard line from McGuanago. One wide receiver on the right, one guy motions motion. in now. Motions in now, hands it off. Is the quarterback yeah. taking it up the middle. And Tahir, I, did he get enough of that? Tahir, let's, let's see here. Yep. Yep, he got enough. It's a first down McGuanago. Got about four in the carry there. It was a good effort, though, by the Arrowhead D-line to try to stop him there for, to force a third and short. So the time is starting to tick now. 7.35 left here to go in the game. You're right, five seed leading 21, 24 to 21 on number four seed McGuanago. It's going to be an interesting one here. Winner plays ha Sussex Hamilton at Hamilton next week. So Good first and 10 for the 30 now. Two wide receivers to the right, one guy in the backfield. One guy motions. Shaw looking to pass. Goes oh, down. He's got him. He's got him. Down the 50, 40, 30, 20. Down the 50, down the 10. Touchdown, Nick Martin. <laughs> Why are they pointing at me? I don't know. And I, it, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you're fine, bro. You're fine. Don't take it personally. I wasn't going to do anything. Yeah, don't, don't yell at him, bro. But a big touchdown pass yeah. right there. 70 yards. 
Tyler Schlatt to Nick Martin, the senior. And now, McGuanico retakes the lead. Yeah, that was a little confusing there, but whatever. No, you're uh, alright, uh, You're fine, bro. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't take it like a... No, I, I wasn't yeah. talking about that. Yeah. I was talking about the <laughs> touchdown. 28. Wait, they're going to call blow the play, Dad. Penalty. What is it? They're going to decline it. Mike Navak is signaling. Must have been a penalty on Arrowhead. I'm thinking. And let's see here. <laughs> I think they thought you were a coordinator here, though, the fans. <laughs> yeah, I think they did, because they were pointing at me, like laughing at me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> nah, he was pointing at you yelling, bro. Like, take that. Okay. I'm not here for the team, but whatever. Kick is oh, away. Yeah, the play is blown down. Another again. one. <laughs> another play <laughs> that time. I don't know. Let's see who's on this time. I think I might have saw. Yeah, I saw an airhead guy jump at first, right before the snap. They're going to decline it, though? What? I don't know. Oh, they're going to redo it again? <laughs> redo it again for the third time. Let's go. It's going to be the third field goal attempt in a row for the field goal kicker, Ryan McCormick. Now he's made it all the first two times. Can he make it the third time? This is actually a big play right here. Yeah, it's actually a big play because it, it needs to be made. And the kick is up. Perfect. And it is good, ladies and gentlemen. McQuanagall leads 28-24 with 7 away remaining here in the fourth quarter. We will take a game break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McWanago High School. Elijah Banks alongside Matt Peck here. McWanago, the four seed, takes the lead 28 to 24 over the five seed Arrowhead here in this Division One Level One WIA playoff matchup. Seven away left here to go in the game from right. a touchdown from Tyler Schlepp. Deep pass to number 17, Nick Martin, the junior, on a 70 yard bomb to re give the Indians the lead. And now let's see if Vance Holtz can. Put together a big drive right here to give Arrowhead the lead right back. Anyways, those ladies and gentlemen, um, for you, for the Mosquito fans who might be listening, you will be playing Racine Case officially next week. Racine Case defeats Milwaukee Reagan 47 0. Racine Case wins their first ever playoff game tonight. So, fun fact there, so Racine Case will head to Mosquito next week. And we got a final score update here. Kimberly hangs on to defeat Appleton North 10 7 here. And a dogfight defensive matchup there. It looked interesting. Appleton North made it interesting with a touchdown to cut the three, but the two seed there, Kimberly, stays alive. Oh, it's looking deep. Got no pressure. Low to the right side. Got to be checked. Oh, oh yeah. his feet. Almost taken down. He's going to take it out of back. Out of the bounce. Gains about a yard, but he was halfway down to being sacked. It still got back up and ran out of it. Isn't that that was old. impressive. Vance Holt, Holtz is full of tricks there, and he was able to. Get right back to the line of scrimmage right there instead of taking a five to six yard loss on a sack right there. He escaped the sack from a, number 90 that time. That was Walker Powers, a 250 pound defensive lineman there. He escaped. Very impressive by Vance Holtz there. All right, yeah. Holtz gets a snap, keeping himself along the right side, taken down. Oh, and oh. taken down on the second attempt. It looked like he was about to stay up once again, but the second effort on the tackle right there by Maguana goes, took him down. and. Now it's third and ten. Arrowhead. This time he gets sacked. All right. Third and ten from the 20-yard line for Arrowhead of their own. They're jumping. They're doing everything they can. From the two wide receiver on the right, two guys on the left. Somebody's banging on the press box. Let's go. One guy in the backfield, they are excited here. Third and 10 for the 26, 6 12 remaining here. Arrowhead down by 4, 28-24. Holtz gets the stat. Look at the pass. Look at the outfield. Holtz over the middle. That is dropped. Oh, right in his hands. All right, how about that?
set. The star cornerback and wide receiver, Owen Kilton on the break up right there. Fourth down and ten. Now if you're in Ireland, do you punt the ball? Or do you go for fourth down here and take a gutsy play? Because if you don't get it, you're giving McGuanago the ball. Although that's why you have to bring in the punt team out, I believe. Fourth down and ten. Stop, stop, stop is needed for Irwin. Oh. On deep. Wait, hold on here. Yeah, no, they're keeping the offense on the field. It's do or die here. It's do or die. It's playoffs. So Vance Holt stays on the field. Fourth and ten for the 20-yard line of their own. Oh, no, he's going to punt. He's going to punt. He's going to punt. I mean, you got all three timeouts. Time so. time. Oh, no, yeah. you only got one timeout. Yeah, they used, they wow. burned two of them. That was a mistake. I was going to point that out. Holt's going to punt it away. Yeah, oh, make sure it's a good one. Uh-oh. Uh that's going to be taken. It's going to bounce. Let it bounce. Let it bounce, Arrowhead. Oh, yeah. Down to the 41-yard line. And now McGuanago is going to come on the field. You're not going to have enough time. 24. You're not going to have enough time. If you're an Arrowhead, it's going to be very limited with only having one timeout. you got to force a quick three and out here. So now, first and 10 from their own 41-yard line for McGuanago. They come back on the field up. Four points, 28-24 with 5.54 left. Laguana go the four seed, Arrowhead the five seed. A quick score update here. Kakana expands their lead over Brookfield Central, 26-14. to 14. They're starting to pull away with it here, but back, back, right back to you. All right. So waiting to snap. Two wide receiver in the right. One guy motions to the, up the middle now. Running up the middle is Laguana go taken down. Red pretty well there. That was... um Same guy, Gage Schotter. Schotter on the pack, run once again. Trying, so now... Maguana obviously going to take their time now to try to take as much time off the clock as they can. But Arrowhead not out of it yet. Still 5.45 left. They got one timeout remaining. One important thing to point out there. You must. If you're Arrowhead right here, you got to force a three out right here. Maguana go, they're going to run the ball a lot here. But don't be surprised if they get, expect some tricks up here. Up the sleeve possibly. All right, second and nine for the 42-yard line. One wide receiver set up on each side. One guy motions again. One guy in the backfield. Hands it up the middle once again. Taken down. He's going to still be short of the first down. It's going to be third down. McGuanago now. 5.17 left. Arrowhead needs to stop here. I mean, third down and six here. What do you do if you're McGuanago right here? It's a play where you could still run the ball. Obviously, you're a big red and high V offense. Um, Gage Tars has been a beast, the senior tonight. But five minutes left here to go in the game. If Arrowhead could get the stop right here, they're going to get the ball with four minutes left. Unless they use their timeout right now, that's plenty of time for Van Tols to try to get something back. Third and five from the 46-yard line for Air, uh, for McGuanago. Watch Mason Cowley the motion. Watch. And oh. the shot going to roll to the left. Pass is going to be oh. incomplete. Oh, my Lord. Here's what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Arrowhead could get the ball back here with 4.42 remaining here in this game. Down by four, 28-24. 46-yard line. Great Tyler Schultz right there. You're rolling your left and... He missed that throw bad again. I think he could have got his man, Buth, right there, the wide receiver. But very good stop right there. And it stops the clock without yeah. having to use your last timeout. So, so you're going to get a lot of time. They still have one timeout left, but Arrowhead needs to do something on off. It has to be a touchdown. Let's just put it that way. They're down by four. They can't obviously tie. Oh, almost blocked. That was close. Taken at about catch. the 20-yard line. Fair catch about, out about the 22-yard line. Arrowhead's offense under Junior Vance Holtz will come on the field. Level 1 this? playoff game. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. We're in the first round, Matt Peck. This is, yeah. We're in for a finish here. I'm going to say once again, like I've said in the past with close games, everybody listening to the 431 of you guys, but fast fuck, but buckle your seatbelts right now. Fasten them up. And the people at Justin Game Live, share this game as well. Oh, yeah. If you're in the car, here's my always famous quote. If you're in the car, you darn well better have your seatbelt buckled. Oh, press box banging again. First yep. and 10 for the 23-yard line. One guy, two guys on the right, one guy on the left. I have one guy in the backfield. Holt's going to keep himself rolling around the right side. He's trying to take out the middle, taking down about a gain of one on the play. Now, if you're Arrowhead, you got to go now here. You're, you're at the point of the game now where if you, if you come down to fourth down at some point of this drive, you're going to have to go for it no matter what. You got to go hurry too here. Time is ticking here. Oh, it's a little over four minutes left here to go in the game. Second, they got to pass. Second and eight from the 25 yard line. Vance Holtz looking to pass. Pass to the sideline. It is caught for the first down at the 35 yard line. Gets out of box. Stop. Clock stops. With 4.03 left in this game. They got, if Arrowhead could do that slowly, they could take the clock down. 
quick slot route, huh. being patient with it, the wide receiver that time. Getting a quick route there, first down, stop the clock, get out of bounds too. First and 10 for the 34 yard line, two wide receivers on the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield. Holtz gets the snap, hands it off up the middle, cutting to the right side, getting taken down at the 44 yard line. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Are they going to move the chains? Yes, they are. Yes, they will. Oh, no, no. second down in the ball. one. very short, though. Very short. Nope, nope, nope. Now they're moving the chains. Moving the chains now. First down and 10, Arrowhead. To the 45-yard line of their own. 3.51 remaining in this game. Arrowhead trailing 28-24. Has the ball at almost midfield. Man, they love to bang in the press box here. It's first to 10 for the 45. time right now. Two wide receivers on the left, one guy on the right, one guy in the backfield. Holtz gets the snap, hands it off up the middle, oh cut it to the left side, oh down to the 50 yard line at midfield, 49. Arrowhead officially in McGuanago territory. That was once again Jacob Center on the run there for Arrowhead. Jacob Center showing those powerful runs here and plowing through that McGuanago defensive line, the, the strong defensive line, I should say, here. Now they're in enemy territory, they're going fast. Time is ticking, 310 left there to go in the game, but they're in enemy territory now. All right, second and three from the 48-yard line from a, for Arrowhead. Hands it off up the, off the left side. Oh, boy, he might get open down the 35-yard line. First down, Arrowhead into McGuanago territory. From Matt Harris' offense so far, it's looking pretty promising. Get that first pass down the field and a couple big runs here by Jacob Sinner. And now you're set up on the on McGuanago's 35-yard line here. Now the time is, goes under three minutes. Here we go. Oh, boy, Arrowhead. Get those seatbelts fastened. Moving up. McGuanago, what they need at this point is a turnover, if anything, because Arrowhead's moving the ball really well. Two wide receivers, one guy on the left. Holtz carries it up the middle, going to the right side. Gets hit pretty hard, though, but stays down, goes to the 25-yard line. That's about second and one on the play. About 2.30 left here in this game. Timeout's going to be called by probably... Timeout, McGuanago. So, gonna use one here. They want they want some time left here if Arrowhead decides to get a touchdown right here, or if they do. But this is this could set up the game winning drive right here. If Arrowhead could get it with it depends right now. I mean but holy cow, we gotta finish right here. We gotta finish. Whatever what WIA playoffs are about is about to finish and we're gonna see one tonight. Right both in the teams, first round. Both teams wanna stay alive here, but one is gonna have to go home. Let's see who's gonna not giving our way or potential matchup next week, but we might not see as close of a game next week, so let's get it through now. So, <laughs> yeah. I think you just gave it away right there, bro. No, 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 no. I'm no. just playing. I'm just playing. No, we're doing um, Edgar versus... No, I'm just kidding. Um, Breaking news, we're doing an eight-player man game. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Here we go, Matt Peck. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Second and one from the 26-yard line. Second down and short right here. I think you got to go a quick run right here off the middle and get a first down. 2.31 left, Arrowhead has the ball, McGuanago 26, trailing by 4, 28-24. Holtz away in the snap, gets the snap, hands off, up the middle, cut it to the right side. Oh boy, he might. this might be trouble. Down to the 10-yard line, flag. And a flag. But what is this on? Who is this flag on, though? That's a big question. Are they moving them back? Let's see here. Waiting a signal here. From the ref, the flag was thrown at, towards the end of the play. Oh, moving Ooh, Arrowhead back. back. Oh. Arrow go, Arrowhead back. Okay, but they still got 225 to score. They got plenty of time to get in with a touchdown. So, but it's still first down and ten. First and ten for Arrowhead here. You get 20, 225 left here on the clock. Two timeouts up for McGuana go one for Arrowhead. First and ten for Vance Holmes. Fresh side of the downs here. You might be able to run the ball still right now. First and ten for the 21 yard line of McGuana go. Holtz keeps himself up the middle. Take it down though, but he got a few yards on the play. Got up a good three or four yards on the play right there. At this point, Arrowhead's doing really something smart. And what now they're McGuana go. Is they're keeping the ball and taking the clock down. If they were to score, McGuana go would likely have no time. Now McGuana go. They're letting the time fall here. They, they trust their defense. Coach Ganevich chose trust his defense right now here to try to put the game in their hands and try to seal it here, but Arrowhead driving. And Holtz gets the snap, going deep to the end zone. It is dropped. Incomplete. No. Wide receiver Ooh. fell down. I think he, I think he just slipped, yeah. I think he tripped on the McGuanago defender. As Holtz did a not a bad throw there. If he doesn't fall down, that might be a touchdown. He's close. 
Van Tolz trying to test the leading cornerback of McGuanagall, Owen Schultz at that time. He didn't work that time as the lead wide receiver right there. Ryan Ryman was it was slipped on him right there. Now it's gonna be third down and six, Matt Beck. Alright. Third down and six from there. McGuanagall 17 for Arrowhead. Arrowhead down 28-24. Had to raise my voice in a closed press box. Holtz gets a step, hands it off, up the middle, to the right side, take it down. Arrowhead's going to have to go do or die now. I don't, I don't like that play call, they're running the ball. you got to pass it on third and medium here. When your season's on the line, now their season is going to come down to this last play right here, fourth and six. So, this Arrowhead season coming down to this last play. They're going to have to, yeah, they're going to eat. Can they keep it alive here with the first down? They need six yards. 28 to 24. McGuanago the four seed, the five seed Arrowhead trailing, but driving down the field in the red zone. And they're only four yards away. 135 left here to go in the game. Only one timeout left for Arrowhead. The winner of this game takes on the one seed Sussex Hamilton. We got the play of the game coming up. Final though. alert: uh, Bull Creek defeats Indian Trail 17 to 12. <laughs> Yep. Oh boy. Yeah, so they're going to be in a date with Franklin next week, their SEC rival. And then Franklin, they, I'm sure their game's wrapping up right now, but they lead Kenosha Bradford 45 <coughs> to 6. Kettle Moraine leads 45 to 7 on Burlington in the fourth quarter now. And that's pretty much it for now. All right. So Arrowhead with the, the play of the season right now, fourth and four. 135 left in this game, 28 24. Vance Holtz, away in the crowd, I tell you, this crowd's going to go crazy if they should have stopped right Two here. Two wide receiver on the right, one guy on the left, one guy in the backfield. Vance Holtz, away in the snap from the 15. Holtz, looking to the left side, looking, looking for someone open. The pass is going to be incomplete. And McGuardo is going to win. Wait, there's a flag down there's on the play. There's a flag, there's a flag. Wait a minute. Whoa. Hold up play, hold up play for a minute. I think Arrowhead season might have just got saved right there. Let's see, let's see. Well, wait, but this penalty is crucial right here. Where are they giving it on? Arrowhead's fans are starting to cheer now. Oh, McGuire goes bowling. It's going to be a penalty. Wow. McGuire, oh, oh no. my goodness. Matt oh, Peck. man. How about that? So Arrowhead season is saved. And now they get a first and goal out the seven. And now wow. you get another four chances. How about that? Wow. Wow. That Just is... as the crowd went crazy for McGuanago, Arrowhead's crowd gets the chair. And now, all right, wow. First and goal from the eight. 130 left in this game. Arrowhead trails 28-24. Could go ahead here with a touchdown from their eight-yard line. A minute and a half left in this game. One more receiver in the left. One guy in the backfield. Away in the snap. Holtz away in the snap. Holtz gets the snap. Hands it off to the left side, going down to about the five, inside the five yard line, down to the four yard line. Gain of four in the play. I like that play call right there. Just Jacob Steiner on the run again. Get as many yards as you can on the play. Cut it, cut the cut the yardage in half right now. Let's see where they spot the ball. Yeah, they're spotting it at the three yard line. Right. Those of you just joining us from games around the state, Arrowhead down 28-24 with a minute left. Has the ball on the three yard line of Mokwanago, second and goal. Holtz hands it off, up the middle, touchdown, Arrowhead, Arrowhead in the lead, with 30 to 28, Arrowhead takes the lead, with oh 56 my goodness. seconds left, mm. Mm. fans of McGuanago are stunned, that penalty ruined McGuanago's season, it's not over yet, but now, Arrowhead, mm. under a minute left, they take the lead, and this field goal is huge right now. The number five seed has taken the lead. McGuanago would need to get a field goal, but they have to get down the field in 56 like I seconds. Said, it's about who wants it more. Arrowhead getting that push right now. They want it more clearly right now. The kick is up, and it is good, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to save our voices for the game break. And 31 28, Arrowhead jumps ahead.
welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to McGuanago High School. Arrowhead jumps ahead 31 to 28 with 56 seconds left. McGuanago has one timeout remaining that is extremely important to note as they will have to throw almost every ball towards out of bounds. And you got to take a chance here to huh. Tyler Slope on this drive. So now it'll be taken out about the 10, across the 15 to the 20, across out to the 25, down about the 25 yard line, taking out of bounds. That takes off about. Seven seconds though, so 43 seconds left. McGuanago just needs a field goal to tie it. Airheads players trying to get the. All right, once again. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, 49 seconds left. We got a one possession game. The game on the line. Playoffs is here. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts, everybody. It's 31 to 28 here. The four versus five matchup couldn't have been even any better, Matt Peck, right now. Yep, 31 28, 45 seconds left. These are the moments the players live by. So, oh, oh, sweep oh, on the left side. Oh. He misses them on the tap on the backfield. Down to the 35, oh, down to the 38-yard line. But they still 43 seconds left. That was a beautiful play call by Mike Ganovich there. Jet sweep, two Mason mm -hmm. keys, Mason Kelly, and then he hands it off to the other wide receiver here, and they get a big first down right there. Put the ball in their own 38. 43 seconds left. They only shaved six seconds left. They got to at least get in the field goal territory here. So 43 seconds left, 31-28, Arrowhead leads here. McGuanago has the ball on their own 38-yard line, first and 10. Show will set up with one wide receiver on the left, two guys on the right, one guy in the backfield. Schultz, awaiting the snap, gets the snap, and tricks it off the left side again, going down about the 44-yard line. Oh, you, gotta go. you gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go! Oh, they call the timeout. They took their final timeout. Now, every single play for McGuanago, you're going to have to run out of bounds now. You you use your last time out here on your own 44, second down and four. You got to get to at least the 25-yard line of... You know what, to at least consider trying to take a field goal to tie the game here. But you, if you're McGuanago at this point, I feel like you just got to go for the win. And you got to get out of bounds every play. 34 seconds left here to go. Down three. Big finish here. First round of the playoffs, Matt Fay. Yep, second and four. It'll be when we come back from the 44-yard line for McGuanago with 34 seconds left. Arrowhead leads 31-28. We have a thriller here, ladies and gentlemen. McGuanago, this is classic eight football right here. <clears throat> Takes the field. Second and four from the 44-yard line. 34 seconds left. 31-28. Arrowhead leads. Schultz gets the snap. Roll on the right side. He's got to throw it somewhere out of bounds. Schultz looking downfield. Schultz going to throw it. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. over the head. So third down now with 28 seconds left. And right, like I said, again, this is the moment in the game where you got to take shots downfield. you got to get some good slot routes, slant routes, out of bounds right away. And now they wasted a good amount of time right there. It's only 28 seconds left on the clock. Third down and four. McGuanago, even if you have to, Father Schultz, you might have to just run up forward and get out of bounds quick. Just put him at midfield there for a first down and get a fresh set of downs. Let's All right. Go. So it's going to be third and four. 31 28 lead for Arrowhead. This is a big play. 28 seconds left. McGuanago has the ball in their own 44. Schultz gets the snap, hands it off, does the trick play again. It's going to be Redwell. This time, <laughs> check it down and bounce. That's the run down the clock. You gotta hurry! You gotta hurry for McGuanago! This is gonna be the last play of the you game! You gotta hurry up! You gotta hurry up! They have not even gotten set yet! Ten seconds left! You can't spike the ball in there! You gotta go lateral here! He's gotta go! He's gotta go! He's gotta go! He's gotta He's gotta go! Going. He's gotta go. Four seconds left! Show, look at the pass! He's gotta go for it all here! Goes downfield! It's gonna be incomplete! And the number five wild. Wow! Talk about an ending, Matt Peck. Talk about an ending here at McGuanago High School. Arrowhead comes in with the upset. They will meet Sussex Hamilton next week at Hamilton High School. How about that for <laughs> Coach Taraska? Nice win for Coach Taraska. He's watching down right now. Very proud of this Arrowhead team. Look at that. Look, Look at the Arrowhead did. student section here. They're running out. I, I'm sure they do they want to storm the field? Are they allowed to? Who knows? Anyways, big win though for the Airhead Warhawks here. Now they get a date with the number one seed, Sussex Hamilton next week. Let's see. Can they pull it off? We'll see. That's That'll gonna be, be a good one. That'll be next week. 
Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. We will announce our game probably on Tuesday. Um, we'll see you next week, wherever. Somewhere level two, somewhere in the Milwaukee area. Thanks again, signing up. Matt Peck alongside Elijah Makes a lot of number five seed Arrowhead wins 31-28 over McGuanago. Have a good night.